It has become a season-long formula for success. Strong starting pitching, this time from Kurt Schilling, and clutch hitting to fuel the lead. The Phillies now have more wins than in all of 1992 and have seriously slashed the Expos' hopes. But tonight, one of the toughest hombres in baseball, who always riddles the Phillies, Dennis Martinez attempts to recover from a deep personal drought. The Phillies host the third place Expos next. Place Phillies face El Presidente next. Hi again, everybody. I'm Larry Rosen. Welcome tonight to Phillies Baseball exclusively on Prism. When the Expos rolled into town, their skipper Felipe Alou said they clearly needed a sweep to get back in the race. They've already lost their first game. It'll be interesting to see just what kind of attitude they come out with tonight. They come out with Dennis Martinez, a 200-game winner pitching tonight. Martinez, once out of Montreal, and his recent performances have shown it, a 7-11 earned run average his last three times out against Big Ben Rivera, who's looking for win number 11 tonight. And stay tuned with their thoughts on tonight's game. We've got Jay Johnston and Chris Wheeler coming up next at The Vet right after this. Richard Schickel of Time Magazine says The Fugitive is a first-rate thriller. It's fast and furious raves David Anson of Newsweek. Starts at a gallop and never stops to catch its breath. Harrison Ford is The Fugitive, rated PG-13. Now playing at a theater near you. It's baseball under the sun when the Phillies try to bury the pesky Montreal Expos live from the vet Thursday afternoon at 1230 right here on Prism, the home game home of the Phillies. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to Veterans Stadium. Chris Wheeler with Jay Johnstone, the Phillies and the Montreal Expos. Once again here tonight, Dennis Martinez on the mound for the Expos. Now, Jay, Martinez is a guy who is struggling this year, but on a given night, can he be a tough customer? Oh, I'll say he can. Even though, as you said, he's struggling, he still pitches very well. He's got great stuff. Unfortunately for him this year, the fact that he, he is winning ball games, but in six of John Wetlands, their premier reliever's blown saves, four of them have come against when Dennis Martinez is pitching. So if you take that into consideration, Martinez, an excellent pitcher, can always give you a good game. He thought, he really thought he was going to be traded, and it didn't happen. He's a little unhappy being here in Montreal. You will probably see him go at the end of the year. And I think maybe that's one of the reasons why the up and down year he's having. Two losses and three no decisions in his last five starts. On the mound for the Phillies tonight, coming off a real good game in Atlanta last week, will be the right-hander, Ben Rivera. And we'll be back with the starting lineups. They're coming up right after this. Phillies baseball is brought to you by smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light. Head for the mountains of bush. By your local Sherwin-Williams paint stores. The pros know Ask Sherwin-Williams, a participating sponsor of Major League Baseball. By Mellon PSFS, the official bank of the Phillies. By Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages, no other book can match it, a Bell Atlantic company. By Texaco, save up to $5 by joining Texaco's frequent Fueler Club. Visit your local participating Texaco location for all the details. Texaco, star of the American world. By Coca-Cola. Phillies Baseball and Coca-Cola, always a hit, always Coca-Cola. By Cento Fine Italian Food, the company that says trust your family with our family. By Pizza Hut, call Pizza Hut Delivery now and have your pizza by the fourth inning. By Jiffy Lube, America's favorite oil change. And by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield Personal Choice, the health plan that controls costs, not people. What is a mountain man's natural environment? Let's explore. A mountain man enjoys peaceful surroundings, a place where gentle winds blow, and the beauty of nature is all about. Only here does the mountain man find true happiness with a smooth bush beer or an easy drinking bush light. So, head for the mountains and find out how the true mountain man can make any environment a more natural one. 
Yeah, you were right, Judd. There's no beach traffic. Easy. I went out. There's a Coke machine. Man, I'm so hot. You certainly are. Hot as in sweaty. Okay, hey, so crank on the AC. Air conditioning is for the week, like yourself. I'm sticking to the seat, like yourself. That Please. dog is Please. moving faster than we are. All you guys ever do is complain. Your shoes are pretty. Could someone please fan me? No. Coca-Cola, anyone? Yay! All right. Thank That's you, fine. Alan, for serving a purpose in my life for the first time. Well, You're very welcome. Time you followed him from the first day he signed with the team. You know he's not perfect, but on certain days in his life, he has been. The night he poured in 63 points. The time he crushed three home runs in the World Series. The day he found Dwight Clark in the end zone. And you wish at some point, at some moment in your life, you could be that perfect too. And that's why you cheer for him. That's why you believe in heroes. Here's your Sherwin Williams starting lineup tonight for the Montreal Expos, managed by Felipe Alou. The line of the Shields at second base. Randy Reddy, the first baseman. Randy Reddy, that's right, the former Phil is here now. Marquise Grissom in center field. Larry Walker, the right fielder. Moises Alou will be in left field. Darren Fletcher is the catcher. Mike Lansing at third base tonight. Will Cordero back at shortstop. And on the mound, the veteran right-hander, Dennis Martinez. And for Jim Fergosi's first base, Phillies, Holland, Stocker, Duncan, and Crook on the infield. In Cavillia, Dykstra, Eisenreich in the outfield. Darren Dalton behind the plate. And all the way on loan from England, big Ben Rivera. Ben Rivera is six foot six. He's 230 pounds, just 24 years of age from the Dominican Republic, a free agent of the Atlanta Braves back in 1986. There are the numbers on him coming off a strong outing, beating, Mon uh, beating Atlanta 10 to 4 last week in Atlanta when he went seven and two third innings, giving up four earned runs, all of them in the first inning of that ball game. The umpires for the ball game tonight. Kerwin Danley, the young rookie umpire behind home plate. Joe West is at first. Crucci, Frank Pulley at second base, and at third, Gary Darling. Randy Reddy will bat second here. He's just come up from Rochester, where he was playing this year. Played for Oakland last season. And Randy Reddy will bat second by Delano to Shield. J.D. Montreal Expos can't figure out who their first baseman is, so they're going to give Reddy a shot at it. Tonight. Well, it's uh, multiple chairs out there. Not only are they having trouble at first base, Chris, what about shortstop? Toss off between Cordero and Lansing. And tonight, Cordero with his 27 errors plays shortstop, and Lansing moves over to third, and Sean Berry takes a seat. So here we go with Delano De Shields leading it off, batting at an even 300. The Seaford data. Delaware native with a couple of homers, 25 runs batted in. Delino, a prototype leadoff man now since he's cut down on his strikeouts. And when he gets on base, they win. When he doesn't, as he didn't very much last night, the Expos have their troubles. And Ben Rivera starts him with strike one, says Kerwin Danley. Delino up among the league leaders in stolen bases with 34. Curveball misses. One ball and one strike. 81 degrees at game time. A fairly pleasant evening here tonight at the vet. Another breaking ball to the Shields, and he misses. Ben had five walks and two strikeouts in that game last week at Atlanta, but three of the walks came in the big first inning for the Braves. When they batted around, there's a base hit the center field on the 2 1 fastball. Dykstra bobbles it for just a second, and here goes the Shields. Good base running by Delano to Shields. That'll be a hit and an error, and it looks like the Shields might have hurt his hand. Well, he really hustled around first base, and as he slid into second base, he got his hand, I guess, too close to the bag. You can see right out of the box, Delano all of a sudden picks up speed, and Dykstra, all he had to do, he had to make about 15 steps, just bobbling a little bit, and the Shields on his way to second. But now watch him dive in and get his hand caught right there on the bag. That's what happens when you make that hard turn at first as Delano the Shields did if a fielder bobbles the ball you can keep on going but unfortunately for him in the Expos he seems to jam the finger. It's on his left hand. And for Lenny Dykstra that is error number seven on the year. And he takes off the gloves and he will stay in the game as he's got a Sore left thumb, it would appear. 
Now the Expos have a leadoff base runner at second base. Nobody out, and here comes Randy Reddy, who was batting 289 at AAA Rochester with nine homers and 46 runs batted in. Randy getting a nice hand. And he goes right back through the middle for a base hit. The Shields will, or the liner will stop at third. And the Philly and the Expos have runners at the corners. And nobody out as he just kind of reached out and poked that one through the middle, Jay. Yes, he did. You could see it was a hanging breaking ball as Reddy hit it. The Shields really didn't get a very good jump. I think he's thinking about the injury to his hand. And the very surprised Reddy as he got the first base looked up and saw the Shields at third. See him looking at that thumb. Mm -hmm. I guess he also wanted to make sure that uh, Ben Rivera didn't reach down and pick that baby on him. Well, that base hit, though, as many hops as it took through the infield, he should have scored. Marquise Grissom, the batter. Runners at the corners and nobody out. Pops him up. It's playable. Cruck. One away, and they get a big out and retire Grissom on one pitch. And that'll bring up Larry Walker, and you see the Shields continuing to look at his thumb. It's one of the things that manager Philippe Lou of the Expos has harped on a little bit about his young players is the fact that he'd like him to take a few more pitches to gauge sometimes the pitcher's strength in his fastball and his velocity. But some of these guys, they want to go after that first pitch and that first at bat. There are the numbers on Larry Walker, who saw a 10 game hitting streak come to an end last night at the hands of Kurt Schilling. He did walk in the ninth inning to load the bases. And the fastball is there for a strike. Walker with uh, 15 homers, 57 runs batted in against Ben Lifetime. Three for 11 with two RBIs. That's 273. Phillies have the infield at double play depth with Duncan at second base and Stockard short. Walker runs very well for a big man. Foul. There are the runners. Delano DeShields at third base, and he continues to look at that thumb. And on at first base, Randy Reddy, who got a base hit, his first at bat in an Expos uniform. Kind of makes you wonder how DeShields will doing his next at bat whether he'll be able to hold the bat fastball and he stayed off it yeah it is his left thumb so it won't affect his throwing but as Jay mentions it could affect his hitting one ball two strikes on Walker on deck is Moises Alou lob toss to first by Ben Rivera send birthday wishes tonight to Bob Dalby Collingswood, New Jersey. Walker's been driving quite a few runs in the last nine games. Quicker move over to first, but not a good one. His Cruck had to go to one knee to catch it. Ready, not much of a threat to go anywhere necessarily. But ben Rivera really ought to just concentrate on Walker. They do run a lot through the Montreal Expos. 158 stolen bases to lead the league. A fastball through there, and Walker took it. He must have thought it was inside. I think Walker was looking for the breaking ball. Watch the location of this fastball. A beautiful pitch right on the inside corner. And Kerwin Downley didn't waste much time. He rang him right up. Definitely a strike. Mm -hmm. now he was either looking breaking ball or looking for something out over the plate. Now he has to bear down against the dangerous Moises Alou at 280 with 68 runs batted in. He has 29 RBIs in his last 32 games, does Alou. And he had a big night here last night with a couple of hits. Base hit, center field. Dykstra will cut it off. One run's going to score. Runners at first and third again with two outs as Ben Rivera just threw a first ball, fast ball to Alou, and he nailed it. So he almost was out of it without any trouble, but couldn't quite do it. Well, this fastball almost cuts the heart of the plate, and Alou didn't waste much time. He went after it. A lot of times you'll see Alou take a first pitch fastball, 
because of his father's his father's one of the guys that really harps on taking a few pitches in your first at bat but he jumped all over that first pitch by Rivera and picked up that guy Larry Walker as you saw the shields walk in front of him and Darren Fletcher the catcher will bat Fletcher has moved into the everyday catchers role on the ball club in the last month. There are the overall numbers of them. Randy Reddy now at third base with two outs and on at first base is Alou with RBI number 69. Rounded to Kruk. He will hobble to the bag and retire Darren Fletcher, so it could have been worse. In the inning, one run, three hits, one error, and two left. One nothing Expos. We head to the bottom of the first. Okay, panel, how can you recognize the genuine Yellow Pages? Uh, it has a yellow cover. Good. It says a Bell of Pennsylvania on the front? Right. Uh, it has more choices than sound. Yes! That's what you call a genuine article from mere imitators. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. The genuine Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. A Bell Atlantic Company. When you work one job, grab a quick lunch, a quicker dinner, and move on to job number two, how are you going to spell relief? That's a big relief you can feel, because Rolaids absorbs 47 times its weight in excess stomach acid to stop heartburn fast. So for millions, there's only one way to spell 100% relief. Rolaids spells 100% relief. Hey, kid, how about a float? The frosty mug taste of an A&W root beer float. It really brings back memories. Dad? A&W, our frosty mug taste brings you back. With Kruk at first base, Alou quickly off. Fletcher hits a rope. But you see John Kruk right there, knocks the ball down, and hobbles to first base. Let's go to the Sherwin-Williams starting lineup tonight for the Phillies, managed by Chip Fergosi, Lenny Dykstra in center field, Mariano Duncan at second, John Kruk the first baseman, Dave Hollins at third, Darren Dalton catches, Jim Eisenreich in right, Pete Cavillia in left, Kevin Stocker the everyday shortstop, and on the mound, Ben Rivera. And for Felipe Luz Expos, Mike Lansing at third, Will Cordero at short, Delano DeShield at second, Randy Reddy at first. Darren Fletcher behind the plate. In the outfield, Moisha Salou in left, Marquis Grissom in center, and Larry Walker in right and on the mound. 38-year-old Dennis Martinez. Martinez is six foot one. He's a 180-pounder out of Granada, Nicaragua, the first Nicaraguan to ever play in the major leagues. Signed by Baltimore in December of 73, made his major league debut for the Orioles in September of 1976. Martinez has really struggled lately. As we mentioned in the opening, he has two losses and three no decisions in his last five starts. His last win, July 8th at Montreal, 5-4 to four over the San Diego Padres facing Lenny Dykstra leading the majors in runs scored with 104 and leading the National League in walks with 94. Martin is pretty much of a gamer will come at you with all kinds of an assortment of pitches. He wants that and didn't get it right out of the chute. There's the National League run leaders. Lenny Dykstra, like a lot of Phillies, do not have very good numbers against Martinez. Lenny batting just 193 off him, although he does have three homers. Hits it high in the air to center field. A lot of room out there for Grissom. Post thunder, grabs it, one away. Martinez with a sinking fastball, a crossing fastball, a curveball. He throws it hard for a quick break. Sometimes he'll change speeds on it. He'll also turn his changeup over to left-hand batter. Mariano Duncan, the batter. Mariano batting at 276. He has an eight-game hitting streak, and in that streak, he's batted at a 324 clip. Earlier this year, Duncan had a 13-game streak. Martinez, as Jay just went through his repertoire of pitches, has a oh. lot of them. Some people think he cheats. You see him go off the mound. He spits at tobacco in his palm of his hands, then rubs up the baseball. That can be a little bit sticky, and some feel that it helps him get a better grip on his curveball. And once in a while, a manager will complain. 
once in a while. I'll tell you what, though, he'll find a way to beat you if he can. By hook or by crook. Great control. That's what he lives on. Those kind of pitches. And when he gets the ball there, he can really use his curveball effectively. One ball and one strike. There's the breaking ball. He chases it. Against the Phillies this year, no record in one game for Duncan or for uh, Martinez. And there's the breaking pitch. See how he starts it on the middle of the plate out, and then the ball just breaks right out of the strike zone. A ball and two strikes to Duncan. Tries to check on the breaking ball. Can't. Got him. Strikeout number 89 on the year for Martinez. Two outs here in the first for Crook. Same breaking pitch. He starts it out as a strike, and the ball breaks down and out of the strike zone. But as the batter, when you first see it, you say to yourself, it's going to be a strike. And watch how far the ball breaks down. Tremendous break on the curveball. Crook at 343. That's third best in the league. And he fouls it off left side now to play. Tony Gwynn leads the league in hitting now at 351. Orlando Merced at 350. And then Crook. Greg Jeffries right in the hunt at 340. One ball and one strike on Crock with Hollins on deck. Breaking ball over one and two to John Cruck. Some belated birthday wishes along tonight to our good friend Joanne Armstrong in Broomall. High school classmate from Marple Newtown class of 63. So happy birthday to Joanne. We share the same birthday on Monday. The past Monday. One and two. Inside the Cruck. Yes, you did try and sneak that birthday of yours by us. I did because of the off day. Yes. Uh huh. We would like to thank all the people that sent cards. A lot of fans sent cards. That was very nice of them. John backing away on a pitch. He started to go out over the plate for it. Martinez pushed him away. Martinez is a good athlete. He fields it and throws out Cruck. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. No score after one. on every number one selling Ford at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. It's Ford's factory authorized clearance. Save $2,900 on Ford Aerostar. With bonus package discount and cash back, you save $2,900. See your Quality Plus Ford dealer during Ford's factory authorized clearance. See your Ford dealer today. Get behind the wheel and turn the key. Hurry, Ford's factory authorized clearance ends soon. It's often taken for granted. Yet it's as precious as the very air we breathe. It's called freedom. And it's what inspired Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice, a health plan that offers people the low costs of an HMO without asking them to give up what they value most, their freedom. Personal choice, the health plan that controls costs, not people. There are lots of ways to have fun at a baseball game besides the game. Now, the games. The Phillies give Colorado a Rocky Mountain low Monday, August 23rd, and Tuesday, the 24th at 7.35, and Wednesday, the 25th at 1235 in a business person special. Then Cincinnati turns red Friday, August 27th at 7.35, Saturday, the 28th at 7.05, and Sunday, the 29th at 1.35, when kids get a baseball jacket free. Call 463-1000. Hey folks, if you like Italian food, you're gonna love this company. It's called Cento, and every time the Phillies hit a home run this year, Cento donates $200 to the Philadelphia Child Guidance Clinic. You can find Cento in all su your supermarkets, and they have over 100 fine Italian labels on their wares. And this year, because the Phillies, who lead the National League in home runs with 116, have donated $23,000 $200 to the Philadelphia Child Guidance Clinic for all those home runs. And as we go to the bottom or the top 
of the second inning leading off will be Mike Lansing Lansing playing third base tonight. Expo is having a lot of problems with a shortstop position. Lansing skies the first pitch into short right field Eisenreich there and makes the catch. We, Chris and I talked earlier about all the errors that the shortstops have made for the Expos this year. Cordero their rookie shortstop 27 and Lansing 20. That's a whole lot of errors for that shortstop position. Yeah and they really thought that they had a shortstop in Cordero and they still think they do. He's a very young player. He's only 21 years of age out of Puerto Rico and he has had a, a tough season. But they still think he could help. Them. And Rivera's first pitch to him is a strike. Martinez will follow Expos with a run in the first lead at one to nothing. I think the Expos are in somewhat of a rebuilding program that probably they'll be able to give this young kid Cordero time to to grow into that position. Looks like they're going to make a, a few moves next year Chris uh, maybe lose some of their uh, people that go to arbitration and uh, who knows. Stays off a of fastball. One ball two strikes one out here in the second inning nobody on base for Montreal. And Rivera throws a high curveball. Happy birthday tonight to Madeline Scott, 86. And to Hazel Gibbs of Woodbury, New Jersey. Fly ball headed down the line in right field. Crock near the stands and has room. to play John Crock two outs. Nice play by Crock because as he was running for the ball, you saw him glance at the stands a little bit. So he knew exactly where they were. And he was able to pick that ball off. A lot of times when you're running down the line, that ball, when it's hit from a right-hander's bat, has a tendency to slice back down in towards the field. Crook played it pretty good. On that birthday to Hazel Gibbs, we'd like to thank Mary Pike, her good friend from Woodbury, for sending that to us. Here is Dennis Martinez. You see Martinez on the season and career-wise. Not a bad hitter. He's knocked in 27 runs. Has never hit a major league homer. Delano de Shields on deck. It'll be interesting to see how his hand is when he gets to bat. He did jam a thumb sliding into second in the first inning. Martinez is your classic pull off pitcher hitter. <laughs> but if you get anything near him inside he can, he can hit it. That's right. right. And he swings hard too. But watch him pull off. <laughs> well, he has that old theory I swing hard in case I do hit it. But you're right. That front foot's heading for his own dugout. If uh, somebody were to hang a breaking ball, let's say, on the inside part of the plate, he could probably tomahawk it pretty good. But you have to say, he doesn't get cheated on his rips. Oh, no. He pulls off that one. It's on the inside corner, two and two. Ben Rivera throwing hard tonight. We'll have to check with Phil Feathers, who has the radar gun down in the tunnel by the groundskeepers. He keeps us up to date on all our radar pitches. Chilling at 90 plus last night. Here's the 2 2. Strike three called to Martinez. Martinez takes a look at Danley and says, I'd like to have that one too next inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. 1 0 Montreal. Almost now, reports of the legendary two footed object have been growing. Anything? Nothing. Must be big. Even Chet seen it. We're getting something. Coming over the hill. Hit the lights, boys! Bigfoot! Bigfoot Pizza, the legendary value from Pizza Hut, with two square feet and a tasty new crust you can't get anywhere else, all for $10.99. Okay, folks, let's break it up. Bigfoot Pizza, the biggest pizza you can get delivered. If you were worried that the world was being taken over by rabid status seekers willing to pay any amount to outsnoot the snootiest, here's some heartening news. The classically designed Acura Legend sedan is the best-selling luxury import in America. Oh, and more good news, Poodle Evening Wear sales are down. Lease a Legend for $3.99 a month. See your Acura dealer for details. I work Saturdays and Sundays. It's not a job. It's a dedication. I don't think you can teach someone to tune. You just got to practice until it's natural, just like breathing. There seems something mystic about it. 
So much beauty comes out of music. Mellon PSFS, you're why we do our very best. It's the last business person special of the year. Wednesday, August 25th at 1235. The Phillies play the Rockies and all fans get a handsome poster featuring all the Phillies pitchers' compliments of Mellon PSFS. Call 463-1000 now. Dream Wickers out here today as they play that 10th reunion game here this morning. A little round round of tournament. Some of the veterans of Dream Week. If you'd like to be part of Dream Week, just call 938 1200. That's 215 938 1200. Seeing those guys here today and having them remind me what a great time they've had over the years gives you a chance to do the same thing and head on down to Clearwater, Florida next year. And we'll see you there. Call right away 938 1200. I, I couldn't resist it. I grabbed a bet today and went up and hit off Don Ken. <laughs> Just, I saw him out there pitching. I said, I've got to go up and take a whack off game. What happened? I batted right-handed and grounded out. <laughs> right, there are a bunch of celebrities here today playing this morning. Don Cannon was here, John Valeris, Steve Fredericks, and Mike Missanelli, Howard Eskin. <laughs> Quite a group. It was fun. A lot of fun today. You mentioned Don Cannon, Scott Graham. Mm -hmm. Here we go with Dave Hollins. Hollins, Dalton, and Eisenreich to face Dennis Martinez. And Hollins rips a foul straight back. Dave, lifetime off this tough right-hander. Just 214. He is 9 and 4 with a 2.20 earned run average in 18 games as Dennis Martinez lifetime against the Phillies. Who really never had a whole lot of luck with him. As you can tell by some of these numbers we give on the individual hitting totals against him. Oh, and one to Hollins outside. And that game here at Veterans Stadium in the no decision, he went seven innings, seven hits, five runs, three of them earned. Martinez walked three, struck out three. Expos won that game in the bottom of the ninth inning. That was that controversial game where the lineup cards were all messed up. Hollins a shot to center, but Grissom's right there, puts it away, one out. Marquise plays very shallow, and he was right in front of that one. One of the problems that has plagued Martinez this year, Chris, is the fact that he's given up a lot more home runs than he normally does. Last year, over 220 odd innings, he only gave up 12 home runs. This year, he's already given up 19. So that's one of the reasons he's having some trouble winning ball games, and that was the fact that the bullpen has let him down four times. Those 19 homers, the fourth highest total given up in the league by a pitcher. Darren Dalton tied for the league lead and runs batted in with Barry Bonds. Bounce it right off the end of the bat. <laughs> Bonds did not play today. So he remains at 87. Dalton takes a look at the bat. Now Dalton's numbers are poor against Martinez. Six for 31, two RBIs, 194. I don't think you're going to find too many guys that have good numbers on this pitcher. We'll talk about a guy that's been around a little bit. Yeah, a lot of these left-handed hitters have poor numbers against him. The 0-1 to Dutch. Moves him off the plate inside, one and one. Well, there's a big reason right there. He's not afraid to pitch inside. He's very much a gamer. He'll pitch inside like that. Then he'll come with the same motion with a changeup, and he'll turn it over, which will break down and away from the left-hand batter. And you've got to contend with his good breaking stuff. And he jammed Dalton, pops it up. Randy Reddy, the first baseman off the line, waits. Two outs. Threw a fastball in, and then he comes back with another fastball in. Mm -hmm. Just on the inside part of the plate, might have caught the corner, but in a great location above the belt, just under the hands. Jim Eisenreich, the batter, hitless in four lifetime at bats against Martinez. Eisenreich overall at 326. And Martinez throwing well tonight with good location. Eisenreich has batted 330 in his last 20 starts, batting safely in 17 of them. Inside, outside. And that's Dennis Martinez. When he's on his game, he can paint. Yes, he can. And that's what he's doing early. You know, and the funny thing, there's a lot of talk about him being moved to one of the contending teams. Very surprised he's still wearing a Montreal uniform. Look at that pitch. Oh, he thought it was a strike. He was on his way to the dugout. 
Danley says no, one and two. Two outs, nobody on base in the second. Expos lead it by one, one nothing. Another perfect pitch. He had to try and spoil it. Hits it to the third baseman, Lansing. And out at first base is Eisenreich. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left through two. One nothing, Expos. You've seen it before. The ones who run with the herd. And the one who always seems to run alone. Pennsylvania Lottery has two drawings every week for the Cash Five Lump Sum Jackpot. So every week, I want to go this way. two people can hit Cash Five. All the cash, all at once. When you win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash Five, you'll get all the cash all at once in one lump sum. It's a lot, but you can handle it. Cash Five. All the cash, all at once. Can Texaco System 3 gasolines help make a difference in performance? System 3 performs in a car the way I perform in a car. With System 3, anybody can perform like Mario Andretti. But not in my county. <laughs> Every grade of Texaco System 3 performs in cars both new and old. They do? Well, no wonder we're getting the horsepower we should be getting. Isn't that right, Auntie? Count on System 3 for performance in your car. Dad, can you drive like Mario Andretti? It's a really good-looking Phillies road jersey, free for kids 14 and under, compliments of Gatorade, when the Phillies play the Mets Sunday, August 15th at 135. Get a free New Jersey when the Phillies play New York. Call 463-1000. Business person special number four is coming up tomorrow afternoon. Supposed to be a nice day out here at the vet, so get those excuses ready. We'll see you out here tomorrow at 1235. Phillies and the Expos for your tickets. Anytime, call 463-1000. We'll have one more of those business person specials coming up this month. It'll be against those Colorado Rockies in a couple of weeks. Delano DeShields led off the game with a base hit and moved to second when Dykstra fumbled the ball in center. And the pitch to him is inside. One ball, no strikes on DeShields, batting at 301. Chris, I would think that after watching the guy slide into second base and jam his thumb, that if you were a pitcher, you'd be pitching everything inside trying to jam him. Because you know it's got that thumb's got to hurt. Two and one. There's another base hit for the Shields. A looper to left, fielded by Ian Cavillio on one hop, so. Delano DeShields is two for two, and he's down there shaking that left thumb. He's hurting. Shaking the thumb, and they give him a pitch out over the plate to hit. Watch the location of this pitch. Right out over the plate, so even if he doesn't hit it good, he's got a chance to flare it for a base hit, and that's exactly what he does. I don't know. Well, let's see if he tries to run here. He's stolen 34 bases and been caught just 10 times on the year. The Shields leaves their club in stolen bases. He's in the top 10 in the league, and Randy Reddy takes strike one. Randy got a base hit through the middle his first time up. Randy Reddy handles the bat very well. Not too many teams hit and run 0 and 1. But he is a guy you can do that with at any time because he hits the ball to right field so well. Well, he made it very clear in stepping out of the batter's box as he is now looking at the third base coach Jerry Manuel for the Expos. Manuel going through the signs. Former Dodger. Played about eight or nine years in big leagues maybe ten. Shields goes back in with that right hand there. The left one is the one that's bothering him right now.
One ball, one strike on Randy Reddy. That was hit number four for the Expos. We're in the third. Phillies have been retired in order by Martinez in the first two innings. How about a happy birthday to a Madeline Scott from Holmesburg? She's 86. Claire Budd from Northeast Philly. She's 88. And Bob Whiting from Philadelphia. He's 61. And also, uh, I want to say hello to Jimmy Arnitas, big Tom Lasorda fan up down from Reading. <laughs> there he goes. He's grounded to third. It's a fair ball. Holland's a long throw. Got him. Back to third. Safe. Great base running by Delano to Shields after Holland's made a terrific play to get Randy ready. I'll say that was a terrific play because watch the arm strength that Hollins exhibits here. He has to catch his ball on the line and then throw almost across his body and just does get ready. But like you said, the Shields with great base running instincts. You can see right there, he just did get in front of the tag by Hollins. That'll bring up Marquise Grissom. Phillies have the infield up at the corners back in the middle. Grissom popped up on the first pitch he saw in the first inning. To Crockett first. There's the infield defense. One ball, no strikes on Grissom with Walker on deck. We talked about the Expos when Delano DeShields gets on base. Very similar to what happens with the Phillies when Dykstra gets on. He is their catalyst. Mm -hmm. So far tonight he's produced one run and he has a chance to produce another. Well, how many times do you think we'll see in the course of this season or any season and on a ground ball to third with the runner first the runner gets to third. Maybe once or twice. Exactly. This goes to show like you said they've got great speed on this Montreal Expo team. The only problem they lack is they lack home run power. Here you see Marquise's number with runners in scoring position. Balls and a strike on him. Fastball ripped the left center. Here comes in Cavillia dying and he makes a great tumbling catch. And he might have gotten the wind knocked out of him. I hope that's all it is because in Cavillia is hurt. The run is going to score. The shield scores on the sacrifice fly and in Cavillia pops up and he appears to be all right. That's the second out of the inning. It's 2 nothing Montreal. And Cavillia broke back on this, and then as you can see, watch this. He makes a terrific diving catch, but when he lands, he lands with the glove and the ball right around his chest cavity. And you're probably right, Chris. He might have got the wind knocked out of him, or he might have hurt his shoulder a little bit. You can see as he broke back, then he came back in, and he landed right on the glove, or he might have hurt his hand a little bit when he landed on his wrist area where the glove is. But he's kind of breathing very heavily there, so... Yeah. That's probably it because when he landed on the glove and the ball, it was right just under his rib cage area. Yeah, he messed the play up by retreating and then he made a good play when he came on and uh -huh. caught it. So instead of a looping double, it turns into a sacrifice fly, and the Expos have a two run lead now at two to nothing. It started out like it could have been a lot worse. Walker struck out looking his first time up, and the Shields continues to look at that thumb. And he continues to play aggressively on the bases, so you know, I guess he's okay. Well, you know, those base hits really kind of help those injuries heal a lot quicker. Yeah, he's, he's running the bases <laughs> like crazy too. He's produced two runs tonight, scored both the Expos runs. Walker is swinging a foul tip, held on to by Dalton. One and two. Walker Expos using one of those cherry laminated bats by Louisville. You see more and more guys with those. Randy Reddy's was using one. And the one two pitch. Outside with a breaking pitch, two and two. On deck is Alou, who's knocked in a run. At RBI for Marquise Grissom, number 65. Another foul tip, a swing and a miss. A uh, swing and a foul tip held on to by Dalton. Strikeout number three. Expos get a run on the legs of Delano to Shields. A run on one hit, no errors, and nobody left. 2 nothing Montreal. Time now for tonight's Vintage Vision as Larry Rosen looks back at the careers of the only three brothers to fill the same outfield. There's one of them right there, the Alou brothers.
Let's recall the remarkable Alou brothers, Matty, Jesus, and Felipe, who combined for over 5,000 Major League hits. Each player had his own independent style, but Felipe had the most power. But for one brief shining moment, the Alou brothers made baseball history. In 1963, the San Francisco Giants started an all Alou outfield, the only time it's ever been done. Well, at that time, it wasn't really a, a big thing. Uh, you know how the news now is more important than it used to be uh, 29 years ago when this thing happened. Even to us, now we look back and say, wow, we can't believe this happened. Uh, especially that nobody else I'd be able to do. That's going to be really tough to do. But uh, when it did happen, it was just the most normal thing to us because we, uh, we were at the time, during, during those years, we were playing for the same team in the Dominican Republic. Every, every night, the, the, the three of us were playing in the same outfield. So when it happened at the big league level, we said, hey, but what, what's going on? We've been playing the three of us for more than five years. What a gentleman, Felipe Alo, and uh, after Pete and Cavillia retreats on this ball, Jay makes a heck of a play. Yes, he does. He kind of went back and circled around a little bit. I thought it was like John Wayne and the Indians, but he recovered quickly and did make a fine diving catch. And you can see right there, just kind of knocked the wind out of him a little bit, but he's okay. Anytime you got a body by Jake like that, you're going to bounce back quickly. It's like a football player who landed on the ball. <laughs> You, know, you talk about Philippe Lou, 2,082 games and over 2,100 major league hits. Not a bad, not a bad career. Huh? Yeah, they, they were all good players, says the Lou's. Beanie Cavillia, the batter. And the fastball runs inside, ball one. In Cavillia, 262, has six homers and 14 runs batted in his last six starts. And he leads the Phils with nine RBIs against these Expos this season. Phils are four and four with Montreal. Breaking ball and a long drive. It's way out of here. What a home run by Incavilia. We're just going over those power numbers. And he blasts number 20 out of here to center field. And it's two to one now in favor of Montreal. I guess he got the win back, huh? They must have. Either that or he just blew it all out to center field because Pete was out today taking extra batting practice. They had a left-hander pitching to him, and he was hitting the ball all over the seats in left field, center field, right field. And here, he crushes this one. This ball goes out of left center up there, and with that, Gento just donated another $200 to the Philadelphia Child Guidance Clinic. And that gives the Phillies on the year a total of 117 home. All the way into the seats in center field for Incavilia. And here is Stocker. Kevin swings and misses. Jay mentioned the home run ball has plagued Martinez this year. That's number 20 that he served up. And as I mentioned earlier, he only served up 12 all last year and winning 16 ball games. So the reasons why he's having his problems. But look at that. He comes right back and makes a couple of great pitches. And he's got the young kid Stocker 0 and 2. Crowd looks like it's around 40 again here tonight. Stocker takes it inside 1 and 2. Greg Harris now of Colorado as we look at Incavilia. Leads the league in home run balls allowed with 22. Jack Armstrong and Juan Guzman have 21, and now Martinez with 20. Two balls and two strikes. Ben Rivera waits on deck. That was the first Phillies base runner of the ball game. Well, he didn't stay out there very long, did he? <laughs> they say 418 feet on the tail of the tape. Green Cavillia's bomb to center. Stocker beats a breaking ball foul third base side. We'd like to send belated birthday wishes along to Jay McLaughlin. We got a note from his father-in-law, Thomas Munyan of Margate City, New Jersey. The letter was a little late in arriving. His birthday was yesterday, so happy birthday to Jay. You know, coming in tonight, I'm looking back over our notes. You could do you had six homers and 14 RBIs in his last six starts. Well, just add some more to that total. Stocker with a good eye behind in the count 0 and 2 is now working full at 3 and 2. 
that's what's impressive about this young kid. You know, everybody talks about his glove, but he's got a lot of poise for a young player, especially at the plate and taking pitches. A lot of times you see young kids come up, they'll be very anxious, swinging a lot of balls. Fouls it back. They'd like to get him on because Ben Rivera, as we look at Larry Bow at third, Ben Rivera is a very good bunner. Rivera is third in the league in sacrifices with 11 of them. Behind Jose Offerman and Jay Bell, two position players. Here is Big Ben. Three and two on Kevin Stocker. Stocker with a little open stance, chokes up on the battle of it, just tries to put the bat on the ball. And he walked it. Good job by Kevin Stocker. And now Ben Rivera can come up with a chance to bunt him over. You know, a lot of people just look at that, Chris, as just a walk. After the home run by Incadilla, Martinez quickly made two great pitches on him, had him 0-2. Stocker fouled off a pitch and then really made Martinez work a little bit and he worked the walk out. That's a great at bat for that young kid. There are Ben Rivera's hitting totals, but he shouldn't be up there to hit right now, we wouldn't think. And he's already showing that he's going to bunt. He does. And he bunts a foul. Martinez threw him a riding fastball that time, and he popped it foul towards the dugout. And Boa will go through the signs again. They want to move him to second. The base runner stopper for Lenny Dykstra, who's due next. Here's Kevin with a walk, being held on by Randy Reddy. Let's just see Randy Reddy back in the big leagues and in the National League. One of the more popular guys to play here for the Phils. And Martinez steps off. I don't think he's trying to find out whether Rivera is going to bunt because he knows he is. Oh, that curveball. <laughs> he did a double <laughs> pump at that one. He sure did. <laughs> That's a tough pitch to bunt when it's coming right at you first. Yeah. Look at Ben's expression. Woo. <laughs> Look Watch at this. where this curveball starts out, folks. He starts it right at his head. Ooh. <laughs> and then Big Ben kind of backed up a little bit and watched it break down over for a strike. See, that's what happens when you show the bunt too early. That'll make you flinch, too. They shouldn't show the bunt that early. And he bunts through it for a strikeout. And Rivera, who is a very good bunter, doesn't get it done this time off Martinez. Slammed his bat in disgust, and there's one out. Rivera give it. Rivera giving himself up real early and then as the big breaking ball goes down and away he really has nothing to reach out to butt the ball with he already choked up on the bat. And you see how upset he was with himself because he knows he had a chance to help himself there and he's very skilled at that. Dykstra 0 for 1 with a fly ball to Grissom in center Lenny at 303. With those 104 runs scored. Stocker has stolen two bases in two attempts thus far. Dykstra has scored 33 runs in his last 33 games, 61 in his last 60. Stocker was leaning a little bit then, and Martinez has a real good move and fired it over there late. Randy Reddy is as a first baseman. We've never seen him play there before. Another quick move. He almost picked Reddy off that time. It's got to be a new experience for him being over there and trying to catch these throws from Martinez. <laughs> well, as you mentioned, Martinez with a very quick move to first, also a very quick move to home last year. 17 guys were thrown out trying to steal off Martinez. Throws a fastball away. Dennis now 38 years of age. As we look at Boa going through the signs through a perfect game against the Los Angeles Dodgers on July the 28th of 1991. What an accomplishment by Martinez. Yeah, I have to tell you, I was there. Uh, he, and they said he was really in command that day. He there were hardly put, even many balls hit hard that day. <laughs> He put his pitches exactly where he wanted. 
He had the curveball breaking down. They're the perfect games, you see. But on that particular day, he just had everything going for him. And as you see, he's the last one to pitch a perfect game in Major League Baseball. Lenny Dykstra patiently works it to 2-0. and oh. Dykstra leading the league in walks with 94. Phillies leading the league in walks as a team. Phillies have a chance to have three players draw over 100 walks this year, and they've only in their life of the organization had a guy get 100 one time. Never more than two players get over 100 in the season. Last one was Von Hayes. 3 0. Yeah, that's very unusual to see a team have three players that close. And maybe one two is a lot, and three is uh, out of sight, really. But Dykstra, uh, we'll see if he looks at one here. On deck is Duncan. 3 0 to Lenny. He looks at it, and it is on the outside corner strike call. Dykstra so many times this year has gone 3-0, 3-1, 3-2, and then walked. And now Frank Pulley and Martinez discussing something. Oh, I, I, you, could, you could hear Frank Pulley and read his lips, and he was telling Martinez to make sure he better stop. Now, normally they don't give him a warning. They just call it. Right. But he gave him a warning then about stopping. Doesn't matter if he goes first, he has to stop when he comes to the plate. Dykstra to deep right field, it's out of here. Home run, Lenny Dykstra. Dykstra with a long home and a right center. The Phillies have exploded for three quick runs here and lead it three to two. Well, just like that, the home run ball again plays Dennis Martinez. Martinez with the command of a good stuff in the first and second inning, got behind Martinez, I mean, got behind Dykstra, came in on a corner with a 3-0 pitch, and here 3-1 puts the fastball just out over the plate. Lenny Dykstra now has four career home runs off Martinez, even though he's hitting under 200 against him. And once again, Chento picks up some money, Jay. Yep, another $200 to the Philadelphia Child Guidance Clinic by Chento. By the way, they're here tonight, Chris. They're in the... Uh, Legends booth, I think. And we appreciate them sending another yeah. 200 to the Child Guidance Center. And the Phillies continue to hit a lot of homers. Duncan is having trouble staying off that breaking ball. Joe West said he did. One and one. With that home run, the Phillies now have 118 home runs. San Francisco going into today at 115, so the Phillies lead the National League in homers. Crowd roars every time a ball goes in the air right now. Grissom. All right, that's 118 homers. $200. 23,600. Nice going, Chento. $23,600 already, and we still have a month and a half to go. Lenny Dykstra's home run is 13th of the year adding to his career high totals in that category. Most home runs for a silly Philly center fielder since Gary Maddox had 13 in 1979 and 14 in 77. That long ball hit Maddox will be along in the fourth. Nice ball of 388 feet for Dykstra. Phillies with just two hits in the ball game, both homers. Throw in Stockers walk. They have three runs in the inning and have taken a three to two lead. With a swing and a miss, John grounded back to Martinez on a high chopper his first time. Out. Count one and two on Crocker. 
Dykstra also now with 37 runs batted in, scoring another run is 105th. Same ball he hit last time. Same result. But the Phillies have a big third inning. They pick up three runs on those two homers. No errors. Nobody left. Through three, they lead it. Three to two. and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice. It seems like you always have to give something up. A health plan that gives people the benefits of an HMO. No one has the right to tell me what doctor I can see. Without asking them to give up their freedom. Personal choice. The health plan that controls costs, not people. The Phillies will be loaded for bear when they play Sandberg and the Cubs Monday, September 6th at 7.05. And Tuesday through Thursday, September 7th, 8th, and 9th, all at 7.35. Then they'll try to send the Astros into space Friday, September 10th at 7.35. Saturday the 11th at 7.05. And Sunday the 12th at 1.35 when kids 14 and under get a free backpack. Call 463-1000. And back here at the vet, Gary Maddox joins us. Home run number 13 for Lenny Dykes for the most home runs hit by a Philly center fielder since 1979 when you did it. I guess that's not safe anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lenny's on a tear. I mean, I, I've yet to see a person when they can sit back and look on a fastball, uh, the power that he can generate. I mean, he's able to get a pitch where he wants it. I mean, just jacks it up. Yeah, and he's a leadoff man. He is. I mean, but we've seen time and time again, if a pitcher gets behind an account to him, he has the ability to wait for that ball to get there and, I mean, get the hit of the bat out just as good as anyone. Well, there are those who feel that if Lenny wanted to change his hitting style, he could hit 25, 30 home runs, and I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yeah, well, when you go ahead and try and, and change your style to do that, you can give up some points on the average. Right. And I think what they want from Lenny is to get on base. Lenny's wanted, Lenny campaigned a few years ago to be the three-hole hitter on this <laughs> club because that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to turn on balls more. Well, a few years ago, it would have been uh, logical. <laughs> This team, uh, he, he's best used as a leadoff man. Moises Alou, the batter, followed by Darren Fletcher, then Mike Lansing. Alou singled to right center his first time up, knocked in a run, his 69th of the year, to give Montreal a one to nothing lead. And Ben Rivera falls behind him, two and one. Ben has not walked anybody. He has struck out three, including tough left-handed hitter Larry Walker twice. Alou fouls away. Moises Alou, I like his style of hitting because he seems to really wait well. He does. I, definitely a trademark that his father had. I mean, hitting the ball into the gaps, you know, like a Tony Perez used to hit the ball into the gaps there, and you wait a little bit longer, and you try and hit the ball the other way. It gives you a better look at the ball. He waited on that one and took it. That hit, by the way, as you saw by the career numbers off Rivera, the hit he got last time, his first off then. He's now one for nine lifetime off him. That is pitched well against Montreal. Jammed him a little bit. Stocker got kind of a funny hop that throws him out one away. Good hands by Kevin Stocker. I mean, the key for Ben Revere is not to walk anyone. You see, when he throws strikes and he makes him hit the ball, it's hard to get good contact off of him, off of his pitches. I mean, the breaking ball, because you cannot afford to go up there and look for that, makes it difficult to hit. I mean, even knowing his fastball is coming, you still have to be extra quick in order to get around on him and make good contact. Darren Fletcher grounded out to first baseman John Cruck his first time up. 
been against the Montreal Expos lifetime in seven games is two and one with a 1.80 earned run average against them this year. He does not have a record in one start came up with a no decision. So he has had success against this ball club and here at the vet he's one and oh against them. Right down the middle with a fastball and it's one and two. Ben Rivera here in the fourth inning with 50 pitches and he's had good control. Aaron Fletcher originally signed by the Los Angeles Dodgers and traded to the Phillies and then over to Montreal. Beaten foul first base side into the crowd. Totals in the game 3 2 1 for the Phillies and 2 4 0 oh, Montreal. Fletcher fouls one away. There's one out and nobody on base here in the fourth. Chris Wheeler with Gary Maddox and Jay Johnstone. And Darren Fletcher looking for his first hit against the Phillies this season. Down the line, headed towards the stands, and Eisenreich will run out of room. able to tie up Fletcher inside and he continues to pound him in there. The one pitch in fact that he got from on the outside part of the plate he took for a strike. So look for Dalton maybe now after going in there to try and get the fastball away. Still a piece of that corner. Oh curveball looks like. Oh and he bounced it up there. ball to right field Eisenreich retreats a couple of steps two down Chris that's a good example there. that's a fastball three two Fletcher knows it's coming it wasn't jammed it wasn't inside the jam him it was right down the middle he had a good swing on it but look how tough it is to make good contact on that ball well as you say Gary it's tough to make good contact because his ball moves so much he is a they, they say that Ben Rivera has a really heavy ball He's been throwing the ball very well through his last couple times out. He he was the odd man out early this year. He would be the guy that they kept skipping over. Well, he came out, of spring, came out of spring training late. I mean, having uh, missed some time down in spring training. Couldn't stay off that breaking ball. Couldn't last. He's right. He had the flu for a couple of weeks. And they think in the last month to six weeks, he's really started to get his stamina and throwing the ball pretty well. They're very happy with him. He has great ability, and he's very, very intimidating for hitters. And he's got a little mean streak in him too. He will pitch inside. Johnny Padres really likes Ben Rivera. 0 and 2. Hard fastball low. One ball, two strikes. Two outs and nobody on. Lansing, the third baseman, his average of 275. He's also played some shortstop. ball right center Dykstra right there runs eyes and right off the plane a strong inning for Rivera just what you like to see when your team goes ahead no runs no hits no errors and nobody left three two Phillies any professional painter will tell you that if you want results like these you gotta know the tricks of the trade you gotta ask Sherwin Williams now these are guys you can trust they've got good paint good price Good advice. Guaranteed. Want to know something? I didn't paint this house. The guy that lives there did. Hey, fella. Nice job. 
This guy knows what the pros know. Ask Sherwin Williams. Number one in America. You've waited all year. Save now on every number one selling Ford at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. It's Ford's factory authorized clearance. Now get up to 2,000 cash back. Get total savings up to 2,900. Get low financing. See your Quality Plus Ford dealer during Ford's factory authorized clearance. See your Ford dealer today. Get behind the wheel and turn the key. Hurry. Ford's factory authorized clearance ends soon. When you work one job, grab a quick lunch, a quicker dinner, and move on to job number two, how are you going to spell relief? That's a big relief you can feel, because Rolaids absorbs 47 times its weight in excess stomach acid to stop heartburn fast. So for millions, there's only one way to spell 100% relief. Rolaids spells 100% relief. Coming up on this Sunday, the Mets are in town, and at 135, a brand new gift for kids 14 and under. It's a road jersey, a gray shirt. It looks just like the Phil's road jersey, including the logo in Philly's red. It's compliments of Gatorade and a must for all kids. Just call 463-1000 for your tickets, or if you're downtown in Philadelphia, stop by the Center City Ticket Office, Mellon PSFS, Rod and Chestnut Street. Pleasant night for baseball. It's overcast for quite a bit of the day here in Philadelphia, of course. Uh, didn't get real, real hot. It's pretty pleasant for the players tonight. Dave Hollins will lead it off. He lined to Grissom in center his first time up. Hollins, Dalton, and Eisenreich to face Martinez. Martinez retired the first six Phillies in order, and then the Phils exploded for three in the third as in Cavillia and Dykstra homer. Pitch E. Cavillia hit out was a breaking ball. Came right back over the plate, hung a little bit inside for him, and he nailed it. Fastball one and one. And sandwiched in between the two home runs was a walk by Stocker. Walk to Kevin Stocker. Pirates ahead in the fourth inning. Lonnie Smith with a two run homer. They have a four game series going on in Pittsburgh. Cardinals have won the first two. Breaking ball, and Holland swings and misses. I think the edge that Dennis Martinez normally would have in a game would be his concentration and his desire to be pitching for the team. Now, thinking about trying to get himself traded, you know, that's an edge that can take a little bit away from a pitcher. And you take a, you contrast that with a team like the Phillies who are hungry right now, it's spell disaster. But he definitely has good stuff. Rounded up the middle and threw for a base set. Collins makes that big turn at first. Wilson gets it back in cleanly. And the Phillies have their leadoff man on here and a base hit by Hollins, their third hit of the game. You know, and I think that's what the Phillies are hoping the, the trouble with Thick Pin was. That maybe it's just something not getting along with the organization. Here's Hollins' base hit back up the middle. But not getting along with the organization, ho hopefully coming over here, getting a new start, and give him the edge that uh, that made him a great relief pitcher. Darren Dalton, the batter, popped up foul to Randy Reddy at first, his first time up. Dalton with the 21 homers, 87 runs batted in to lead the or to be tied for the league lead in that category with Bonds. Martinez getting behind a little bit in the count now. The early on in the first couple innings, he was ahead of the hitters. Kevin Stocker had a good at bat against him in the third inning. He was down 0-2 and then walked and scored on Dykstra's homer. Two and oh. Dalton has never hit a lifetime homer off Martinez and he only has two RBIs off him. And there you see his season numbers against this ball club. Phillies have one more trip to Montreal this year. They have a three game series coming up there. Pretty good 2 0 pitch. 2 0 pitch when you're looking to for something right down the middle there that you can jerk. Runs one away and catches the outside part of the plate. And good hitter, you stay off it. They look like they're trying to stay away from Dalton in this at bat. They do again and miss. Martinez is not quite as sharp as he was earlier, and as a result, he's getting behind. Here are the 50 pitch total. He's gotten behind, and the Phillies have made him pay for it a little bit.
that doesn't get it. Dalton patiently waits out a walk. And that's walk number two issued by Dennis Martinez. And walk number 92 on the year for Darren Dalton, second in the league. Eisenreich grounded a third his first time up. Eisenreich gets jammed a little looper to right and right there is Larry Walker who comes on and makes the play. Martinez got in on Eisenreich. He was looking to pull the ball early in the count and get lose some runners. Well, definitely not looking to bunt in that situation. Fergosi has him hitting in an ideal situation. Runners on first and second. The hole open for him on the right side. Just a good pitch, a breaking ball for Martinez that jammed him a little bit. Did he jam himself then? Well, yeah, that's what I, I should have phrased it that way because he threw the ball and Eisenreich stepped into it and the ball got in on him a little bit. In Cavillo hit the long home run to center field his last time up. Pete now with seven home runs and 15 RBIs in his last seven starts. Ten RBIs against his Montreal club. I think he will be trying to get that breaking ball away from Mr. Cavillo in this at bat. I mean, breaking balls are the way you want to pitch them, but you cannot hang the ball on the inside part of the plate. Ooh. Good fastball. In Cavillia batting seventh tonight as Barnes, the left-hander, starts throwing. Brian Barnes, who Phillies have seen a number of times as a starting pitcher. Stockers on deck. Now in Camellia tires are waiting and steps out. Phillies have good speed on the bases and Dave Hollins at second and Darren Dalton at first base. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't call that good speed. Darren doesn't run. <laughs> 70 hits and 69 RBIs. That's 20 home. He would be very hurt to hear you say that. Out straight back. Or I should say he runs okay for a catcher. He runs real well for a catcher. <laughs> I mean, real well. Cavillia behind in the count. Got a pretty good rip at this. Got a fastball again. Martinez looked to run that fastball in on him. Got it, got it where he wanted it. And all he Cavillia could do really was foul it straight back. Peter Cavillia was originally drafted by these Montreal Expos and did not sign with them. Out of Oklahoma State where he was a legend down there and then finally wound up with the Rangers. And Martinez are having a little. Yeah, Martinez is waiting for Fletcher to put down that, that curveball on shore. And in Cavillia is jumpy up there, getting tired of waiting, steps out. So he has 20 home runs again. Six out of his eight major league years, he's had 20 or more homers. Oh, got it in there again. He was selected by Montreal number one in June of 1985 the eighth overall pick and then traded to the Rangers in Good. November of 85 for Bob Sever and Jim Anderson when he would not sign. Now Ikevilla is definitely saying nobody throws me this many fastballs. He know I'm a fastball hitter. He's looking to set me up away and he has such a good curveball. And they're coming back in there again and he was starting to dive out a little bit. He's got to throw it sooner or later away, doesn't he? I would think. You'd be able to tell by the way Fletcher sets up. Well, we saw with Darren Dalton and Darren's first at bat, how he pitched him inside, then continued to stay inside and jammed him. So, you know, Martinez trying to stay one, one up on these power hitters. They're together on the pitch. Fastball. And it's away. Oh. <laughs> and he got there. it. There it was. Sooner or later. Had to throw it. Had good breaking ball sooner or later to Incavillo, and he really had him set up that time. See, this is the breaking ball that Martinez wants to throw in Cavillia, not the one that he threw that he hit out. This pitch he has to reach for. And 
Stocker the batter. So Martinez with a chance to work out of it now. Phillies had two on nobody out. Now there are two on and two outs. And the runner still at first and second. Stocker walked his first time up. Martinez, who can probably throw a strike anytime he wants to, should have done that to Kevin Stocker in his at bat. 0 oh, 2 on him and then lost him. Right around the plate all the time. This guy is right around that strike zone. Oh, and that's why he's had so many good years. Right around the strike zone with something on it. Like that. He's 95 and 70 in his National League career. That's since 1987. 16 game winner twice in the league in 89 and 92. him out and Martinez out of the fourth inning no runs one hit for the Phillies no errors and two men left three two after four you followed him from the first day he signed with the team you know he's not perfect, but on certain days in his life, he has been. The night he poured in 63 points. The time he crushed three home runs in the World Series. The day he found Dwight Clark in the end zone. And you wish at some point, at some moment in your life, you could be that perfect too. And that's why you cheer for him. That's why you believe in heroes. The new. Lexus GS Luxury Performance Sedan. It not only corners better than the BMW 540i, but it rides smoother. Of course, if you still insist on feeling every pebble in the road, be our guest. See the GS at your New Jersey, Delaware, Pennsylvania area Lexus dealer. The price is within reach, too. Where to find the Mountain Man. A Mountain Man can often be found on the Trail of Adventure, in search of remote watering holes, or weathering harsh climates. Most often, however, you'll find the Mountain Man wherever you find smooth bush beer or easy drinking bush light. So, head for the mountains and find yourself in the wide, open world of the Mountain Man. BPS number four tomorrow afternoon. If you can't come out to the ballpark, tune in for Larry Rosen's pregame at 12. We'll have a game for you right here on Prism at 12.30. Tommy Green will come off the DL and pitch tomorrow. And a young left-hander by the name of Kirk Reeder. There he is. Will be the pitcher tomorrow. Kirk Reeder, a graduate of Murray State University in Murray, Kentucky. 2 0 is Kirk Reeder. Pitched pretty well for Montreal. He's evidently a really quick worker. Cordero will lead it off, batting out of the eight hole, followed by Martinez, the top of the order, Delano de Shields. Cordero popped up to Cruck his first time up. Alfredo Cordero, a young player that they expected to play good defense, hit with some power, and has struggled quite a bit this year. Six homers. 36 runs batted in 27 errors. As we mentioned earlier, he's still very young. Rivera misses two and one. Got him to reach for the ball. Soft fly ball to center field. Dykstra grabs another fly ball. One out. Again, what's bad ahead of the count. Exactly. Again, that's exactly what I was going to say. With the 2 1 count, and they know what the fastball is coming. I mean, and still, this is the best 
he can do. It's not a good swing when you're hitting the count. Ball really moved too. There's Dennis Martinez 0 for 1 with a strikeout looking. Martinez pulls off and fouls it away. Eisenreich is very shallow in right field for Martinez as we check out. We just showed you tomorrow afternoon, then Friday will be on PHL 17, then back at you Sunday evening on Prism when Dallas Green, who is the ringmaster of that circus going on in New York right now, will bring his Mets in here this weekend. That must be an unbelievable season there. <laughs> But you don't know what they're going to be bringing to town for the three game series. Right. You know, but Nia, Murray, these guys get hot. Got Martinez again. Well, we have the pitching matchups. Tanana, B. Jones, and Hillman are pitching. That's for a breaking New York. ball. Get back at Martinez for throwing him that breaking ball when he was sacrificing up there. And that leads off in the bottom of this inning and he's going to see one. There's the line on the big boy so far. And really settled down in his last game in that effort against Atlanta when he gave up four in the first. The Shields has been troubled all night. What a play by Cruck. Ben was a little late getting there but still made the play. Great play by John Cruck and they finally get the Shields out. Look at the great stop by John Cruck. He gets up. He has to fire the ball. And Rivera makes a nice catch up. That's a tough play when you're running toward like that and the ball is thrown hard and low at you. And you're six foot six. <laughs> Phil's lead it by one. When good just isn't good enough. Hey, that's super premium. Uh -huh. Do you really think you need that high an octane for your car? I don't know. But I do know this. I feel my car runs better on premium. And I have other things to worry about. You don't take any chances, do you? I figure if I put the best in, I'll get the best out. So when good just isn't good enough for you, experience our best. Fly with a new superpower, Sitgo. The metal cylinder is secured and turned in a counterclockwise motion, causing the internal railing to rise and disengage. It's easy to make something as simple as opening a jar complex. The challenge is making the complex simple. But that's what we do at Bell Atlantic Mobile. We take cutting-edge technology and place it comfortably in your hands. Bell Atlantic Mobile. Advanced technology and people who make it mean something. I remember last year, honey, when we were moving. Right. Well, she called us and said if we put both our new house and car policies with her, we would save money. Well, we have so many choices at Nationwide. And my job is to make you aware of your options. She's always there with an answer. That's the way we're trained, to be very knowledgeable and to be there when people really need you the most. And that's important. Agents like Margaret are nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. By Nationwide Insurance, Nationwide is on your side. Your nationwide agent in Flower Town is Ralph Kett. Here's the line on the shields. He's out of the ball game now. And it appears he got jammed on this particular pitch here. He, he turns on it pretty good. It hits it down the first baseline. But I think it's so it's not so much that you get jammed, but rolling the bat over the bruised part probably irritated quite a bit. I mean, he came out without the manager even coming out to take a look. You can see him really grimace too on that swing. He's been fighting this since the first inning and and now they're going to take him to the uh, clubhouse and take a look at it. The Shields heard it early on and he finally has to leave the game. There is Sean Berry who will now come in and play third base and Mike Lansing will move over and play second. Berry of course will bat in the shield spot. Ben Rivera leads it off. And it's a fastball outside. Ben struck out trying to bunt his first time at bat. Chris, you know, uh, when you're out there running the bases, you do things instinctively like dive or whether you slide or go head first. You know, but going head first, I mean, that's the type of an injury you risk. And I also mentioned when you're in the outfield and you dive, those are the types of risks that you take, and they can be costly if your team is in contention. And those thumb, and thumb injuries like that, they can really put a guy on the shelf for a while. Look at Howard Johnson. He's out for the year after fracturing his thumb sliding. And Delano DeShields injured his thumb in the first inning as he aggressively went to second when Dykstra fumbled the ball in the outfield. And Rivera 
Shields takes it low, and it's three and one. And the Shields is to the to the Montreal Expos, what Dykstra represents to the Phillies. So we know what it's like when when Lenny's out of the lineup for the Phillies. And the lineup's become a terrific leadoff man, a great table setter for the Expos. Rivera's taken that all the way. And with that big strike zone, he has four hits this season in 35 at bats. And he has struck out 15 times in those 35 ABs. Three balls, two strikes. No way. No way when your knees are that high. <laughs> but he's gone. Strikeout number four. Phraseology for that is it didn't have to be. Erwin Danley calls it down. This pitch is definitely low to a guy 6'6. Six, six. <laughs> definitely low. Look where those knees are. He needed nine iron to get that one. But he's gone and Dykes through the batter. He's flied out and homer to right center. And he's 13th of the year. He now has 37 runs batted in. Scored 105 runs. Strike call to him. Martinez has uh, been struggling according to his numbers tonight. It looks like he has good stuff, but the Phillies are just hot when you make a mistake to him. Certain hitters. Well, I, I think Martinez struggling for him means he's not getting the ball in the exact location he wants. His stuff is always good. Just if he has to have it in the right spot or he's going to be in trouble. And I think that's the little edge that he's missing by being on this team when he wants to get out of there. Uh, wants to negotiate a new contract. Just not happy. And that. That can take it away from a player. Fine major league career for him. In his last outing, he went four and a third innings against the Mets up at Olympic Stadium. Ten hits and nine earned runs. Think about Martinez. I mean, he was pretty much a team leader on this ball club. And now when you're struggling, guys see you going through that, you know, no one starts to uh, to listen to you. You're not interested in helping him. Slaps at the left. Here comes Alou. Can't make it. It's going to go all the way to the corner. Dykes will get at least three. Here he comes, chugging for third, and Lenny Dykstra has a triple. For Dykstra, his second triple of the year. Well, Alou took a bad route after this ball. You see Dykstra, just a little flare down the right, down the left field line. It's at the last second. It goes off the edge of his, just off the tip of his glove there when he makes his dive. But he started back for it, then came in, and then decided to dive. Here's Lenny. <laughs> Not the best form hitting that first base there, but from here on, let's turn on the motors. He sees the play in front of him all the way. Lenny came into the game second in the league in doubles with 33. He saw his little footwork at first base. Why was it like that? Because he wasn't concentrating on the bag as he approached. He was watching where the ball was. But you saw as he got to get near second base, he zeroed in on the bag, and then it was perfect stride all the way in. Yeah, he's more of a doubles hitter than a triples hitter, that's for sure. As we mentioned he has the 33 doubles and now two triples. Duncan has the infield all the way in. Mariano 0 for 2 tonight with a strikeout and a fly ball. Billy's trying to get another one here on the semi misplay out there in left field by Alou. Ooh. Oh my goodness. He was diving in looking for a breaking ball there and did he get decked. You know <laughs> the thing about him getting decked was the ball was by him <laughs> before he went down. He was looking at something away and it gets by him and then he goes down. Definitely yeah. looking to break the ball away. Can't oh yeah. Play. He figured he, he was diving into that one. <laughs> I mean it was too late then. If it is if it was at him it's got him. I mean it appears that it was real close to him but I don't think it was as close as uh, as it looked. I think you'd have trouble telling him that right oh, now. Of course. <laughs> All he saw was ball coming at him. He doesn't realize or I'm sure he does that he was looking to dive out over home plate. Dykstra, the runner at third, Lenny trying to score yet another run, and Mariano Duncan trying to get him home. Well, we knew where he wouldn't be looking. <laughs> That's automatic almost. When you drop a guy like that, you're going to come back with a good breaking ball if you have it, and he did. Pretty hard not to pull off <laughs> after that 
that pitch prior to that one. Two one breaking ball. Two oh breaking ball. I mean now it's two and one. They're going back out there again. Duncan hits it to oh. second and off the glove of Lansing and into center field. Dykstra scores and the Phillies lead it four to two. We'll see how he scores. But they're probably going to give him a base hit because the infield is drawn in. Ball was hit pretty good. It's a fastball. Runs back into Duncan a little bit. He puts a good swing on it. Hit it pretty hard. Lancey just couldn't make the play. It was on him too quickly. Could the Shields have made the play? So it's a hit in an RBI for Duncan. And after he got dropped that way by Martinez, you might see him take off and try and steal a base. You never know. Truck tonight has grounded it back to Martinez both times. Two more runs scored for Dykstra tonight up to 106. Had that major league lead. Truck fouls it away left side. By the way, Lansing had just come into the game to replace the Shields in second as Sean Berry moved over to play third. There is Lansing who was the shortstop last night. Well, it's hard to think that you're going to be a contending team. If you're going to be throwing out different lineups every night, it's just so hard to do it. Young, inexperienced, they have a good nucleus here, but you know, still a couple of players short. Well, they have four real good players in the outfielders and the Shields. Down low. In fact, their outfielders, Alou, Grissom, and Walker, lead the league and runs batted in as a tandem. Sure, they've saved quite a few out there as well. That what Jim Fergosi told us yesterday, Gary, he thinks they're the best defensive outfielder in the league. Duncan gets back to first. Phillies four, Expos two here in the fifth inning. Phillies trailed two to nothing. Now have four unanswered runs on the board. Getting a pretty good lead. Mariano this year has stolen six bases in nine attempts. You know, I just think on a team, when you talk about a good outfield, I think that left fielder is such. A, I think that's a very difficult position to play. And to get someone out there that can do it as well as a Lou or a Barry Barnes, you know, you really have something. Leaning a little bit, then it gets back. Yeah, because left field is where you think about an offensive player most of the time. And if he can play defense, it sure is nice. I mean, if you're trying in left field, you're really trying to just cut off a lot of stuff because the ball comes out there in so many ways humpback line, drive, sinking. You know, you're just trying to make the plays in front of you and not get hurt too badly. You can also go out there and make good plays like a loop almost caught that ball. And like we see Barry Bonds, they not only play good good at cutting off balls and stuff but they make a lot of the plays out there catch a lot of the ball. <laughs> Crux eyes. It's almost like he's thinking did he, did he just give me a sign out? Is that a hot sign? <laughs> Two and one on it. He said I'm going to do whatever I do I'm not hitting the comebacker to the mound. No, I'm not time. hitting that high chopper again. Pitch he's been hitting back to the mound has been a curveball down in the strike zone. He's ahead the count two and one. Duncan leads off first. Puck really being baffled so far tonight by Martinez. He is when you see him take a big swing like that. Definitely have a problem. Trek, one of the few Phillies with a good batting average against Martinez coming into the game at 289. He has 13 lifetime hits off, including a homer. Two and two. There goes Duncan. Ground ball. Nice play by Barry. He'll have to go to first. He got Crock. He was way off the line 
cut that ball off in the hole. Well, you can tell they anticipate getting uh, Cruck out on breaking balls. They expect him to pull everything. But just like Dykstra, when he gets two strikes on him, he'll go the other way. And here's that fastball. <laughs> Double play ball if Duncan isn't running. Good question. So they have a runner in scoring position for Hollins now with two outs. It's Duncan. Collins tonight one for two. He's lined out single to center. Dave with 72 RBIs on the year. And I mean, it's safe for us to assume Duncan was going on his own. On the 2 2 count. Breaking ball by Martinez. He has walked two tonight, struck out four. Four runs, five hits, and error for the Phillies. 2 4 0 Expos in the fifth inning. to Reddy. Randy played pretty well down there tonight. Flips it to Dennis Martinez covering. Phils are gone in the fifth, but they score another run. A run on two hits. No errors. They lead one. And the score after five. Phillies four. The Expos two. Tonight's ladies' night, and there's a special on Bud Light. Oh, really? If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, Thank you. make it a Bud Light. Oh, no, it's Ted from accounting. Do you want your car done right? If you want your car done right, it has to be done by the right people. We take care of our customers. We do the job right. Quality all the way. Experience counts. The customer comes first. Satisfaction guaranteed. We're only as good as our people. That's why Jiffy Lube is America's favorite oil change. We got experience at Jiffy Lube. The Phillies will be loaded for bear when they play Sandberg and the Cubs Monday, September 6th at 7.05. And Tuesday through Thursday, September 7th, 8th, and 9th, all at 7.35. Then they'll try to send the Astros into space Friday, September 10th at 7.35. Saturday the 11th at 7.05. And Sunday the 12th at 1.35 when kids 14 and under get a free backpack. Call 463-1000. Jacket Day. The Cincinnati Reds are coming to town on Sunday, the August the 29th at 1:35, and the Phillies have a great-looking warm-up jacket for all kids 14 and under. It's a blue pullover with a Phillies logo on the front and the back, and it's compliments of Acme and Kraft. So make sure that you make your plans early. Order your tickets easily by phone. Call 463-1000. Stop by one of the many local Ticketmaster locations. That's the Phillies and the Cincinnati Reds on Sunday, August the 29th. Jack a day at 1.35. We go to the sixth inning. Randy Reddy, Marquise Grissom, and Larry Walker, 2 3 4. In the Expos lineup. And Rivera and Dennis Martinez, the starters still in here for both clubs. Reddy tonight is singled up the middle, grounded to third on a good play by Hollins. Nice ovation for Randy as first at bat. Yeah, I think fans really enjoyed Randy Reddy when he's here. He's, you know, he's a Phillies fan kind of player, aggressive guy. We spent about four days together in Jamaica one year. He's had just a blast. Oh, Darren was with us. Look at this. Hollins can't get him. He wasn't going to get him anyway. Well, he made a great play to nail him uh, in his last at bat to take a second hit, wait, second hit away. In his second at bat. But this time it's off the end of the bat. Said, Tier, get this one. And running fastball away. And as Gary said, he hit it right off the end of the bat. Even if Hollins fields this, he is not going to get Randy ready. So, ready a leadoff base runner. He and Crocker, of course, really close. So, they have a few things to say to each other down there. Grissom, the batter. John Crook and Randy Reddy coming over to the Phillies in a deal one night for Chris James of San Diego. There 
is. Back on June the 2nd of 89. Chris James now with San Francisco. Is he still with, He's with Houston now? Oh, Houston. That's yeah, right. he was with the right. He was with the Giants last year. Got off to a great start with Houston this year. I remember Bob Watson was telling me about how well he had been playing, hit the ball the other way. 3-3 is Mark Whitten. What a year he's having. Cardinals have started to hit a lot of home runs this season. I was just 18 of them. Cleveland last week, boy, they were starting to talk about how Whitten got away. Yeah. Right. Three ball a good pitch to Marquise Grissom. Struck him out. Number five for Rivera. Here's a curveball. He got that fastball for the first strike up and in. This looks like it's going to be up and in also and breaks right over the heart of the plate. And Grissom walks Boom. away. Yep. Ben Rivera's strikeout high this year is nine on June the second at Cincinnati. Here's Walker. He's gotten him twice tonight on strikes. Walker just struggling at the plate. We saw him last night swinging some pitches uncharacteristic of what we had seen from him. Yeah, Gary, he came in hot too on a 10 game hitting streak, which ended last night. Walker has great power the other way. Phillies are punching him in the outfield, trying to take the alleys away from him because he is an alleys hitter. Giving him the lines. Fouls one into the crowd behind home plate. One ball, one strike on Walker. 75 for Ben Rivera here in the sixth. turn on the ball but he also likes to hit balls out away from him to the opposite field and when he's swinging the bat well and you catch him hot he will drive it to left and left center. He was on the DL earlier this year and that's when the Expos really started to lose a little ground. He's had some rib cage and hamstring problems in his career. Fanatic in the crowd. We learned that Delano De Shields will have X rays taken on that sprained left thumb that forced him to leave the ball game. Two and two to Walker. Outside. And we'll see if Felipe Alou, his team likes to run, see if he starts Randy Ready here on a 3 2 count. They are down by two. Well, I think he'll definitely start him. The guy's shutting you down like this, like he has. As we'll try and get something started. There he goes. Base hit center field. Ready will make it to third as Walker bloops one into center. So the Expos have runners at the corners now with one out. Sounded as if Rivera made a good pitch then the way it sounded off the bat. <laughs> Sounded like a thud. Yeah, that's usually a good pitch when the guy breaks the bat almost in half. He really got jammed on that, broke the bat. But he'll take. When you're strong, you're strong, and he is. Well, Larry Walker gets his first hit in the series. And that'll bring up Alou, who has knocked in a run with a base hit. He is one for two with an RBI. Chris, you got your personal photographer in here. What is this, <laughs> something for a no, GQ? No, 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 no. High in the air to left field. It's carrying well, and it is gone. A three-run home run by Moises Alou. And the Montreal Expos, just like that, jump on top five to four on a lose homer, his 15th of the year. Well, Chris, you pointed out he just got his first hit off of Rivera tonight, and then turns around and uh, jumps all over a fastball. Well, he's a first ball hitter, and he has been throughout his brief major league career, and he challenges him, and he hits it out. That ball's inside and up. See, look how short that swing is. When a guy throws hard, you don't swing hard to try and catch up with him. You see, you swing short so that you'll be a little bit quicker and get the hit of the bat there. That's a good illustration of how to shorten your swing. And there's Alou putting the expos ahead as Johnny Padres makes a trip to the mound. And Roger Mason starts to throw in the Phillies bullpen. 
So Ben Rivera had a four to two lead. And now all of a sudden it's five to four Expos on the three run homer by Alou. The ball is really carrying here tonight. Oh, he's going to look back and say, well, Randy Reddy, uh, infield swing will. Then I got a broken bat, and boom, we're down 5 4 all right. right. Infield hit, a broken bat, and a bomb. Three runs. Here's Randy Reddy, who's had a good night tonight with a couple of hits, scored his first run for Montreal. Considering a couple of days ago he was in the minor leagues. I know because he played against Scranton. That's right, he was at <laughs> Rochester. There's a Lou, the manager's son. He kind of clapped for himself as he got to first base there. Aaron Fletcher and the count now on Fletcher is two and one. There is the manager, Felipe Alou. And Felipe will tell you in a minute how hard it is to manage with your son on the team, you know, because you don't want to show favoritism. Hit hard to crock, and John will take it himself. Two down. What I mean by that is. You know, when do you take the guy out? When is he considered struggling, or do you let him play through it, or whatever? You know, you just don't want to give the impression that you're paying uh, favoritism. Well, he has done that too, uh, to Alou, several times when uh, his son was struggling. He has taken him out of the ball game. I mean, taken him out of the lineup for a period of time. Mike Lansing, the batter, 0 for 2. He has flied out the right, flied out the center. Breaking ball, a good one over for a strike. So the Phillies down now by a run at five to four. They've trailed two to nothing and now five to four in this game. Another good breaking pitch. I guess Ben could kick himself now for that first ball fastball. Mining the Miners is coming up next. Stay tuned for Larry Rosen's visit with Redding's first baseman, Ron Lockett. Struck him out on three pitches. But the Expos, three runs, three hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. Time now for Mining the Miners as Larry Rosen will visit with the first baseman of the Reading Phillies, Ronnie Lockett. This has not been quite the breakthrough season he had expected it to be. For sweet swinging Reading first baseman Ronnie Lockett, there is still time to salvage something from 1993. Lockett has been bothered by a series of nagging injuries, most notably to his hamstring. But with good health and consistent at bats, Lockett hopes to close with a flourish. Yeah, right now I'm gonna turn it on a little bit. You know, I struggle a little bit, but um, right now I'm feeling comfortable up there at the plate, and I'm just trying to get the pitch that I can drive and just drive it. I know you've tinkered a little bit mechanically as a hitter, now going back kind of to basics. When we say going back to basics for Ronnie Lockett, what does that entail? Uh, that's all I'm saying. Just keep your shoulder in, keep your eye on the ball, and just drive where the pitch is pitched. And as we look at Ronnie Lockett from the Reading Phillies, we'd like to remind you that tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on Sports Channel, the Reading Phillies will oppose the... Canton Akron Indians and Larry Rosen will be in doing that game for you play by play on Sports Channel so be sure and tune in tomorrow night and catch that game. Here's Ben Rivera trying to figure out where did it all go wrong. Three run homer. It's been behind West Chamberlain. So. <laughs> tomorrow afternoon at 1230 we'll have the ball game for you Larry's pregame show at noon. Tommy Green coming off the DL to pitch tomorrow afternoon for the Phillies and Kirk Reader, a left-hander, will pitch for the Expos. As we look at Ben Rivera, Darren Dalton leads it off. It'll be Dalton Eisenreich in Cabilia. 5-7-0 and oh now for Montreal. 4-5-1 and one for the Phillies. Dutch is 0-for-1 tonight. He has popped up foul and walked. Three home runs in the game thus far, two by the Phillies, and the three run homer now by Alou in this inning. Dalton takes a fastball right there for a strike. It'll be Dalton, Eisenreich, and in Cavilia in the sixth inning. Fouled out of play. 
But Dennis Martinez hangs in there. He's given up a couple of long balls tonight. Gave up a run last inning that probably he shouldn't have. His defense was not real sharp behind him. And Darren Dalton's numbers off Martinez. Pergosi and John Vukovic in the Phil's dugout. Close, but no, one and two. He's really pitching Dalton away tonight. Except for the first at bat, Chris, when he a couple of fastballs inside got him jammed. Now he's chosen to uh, to stay away from him. In the last two. Walked him last time. He's been throwing that hard overhand breaking ball that left-handers have been swinging over the top of. We saw Kruk do it, and also Hollins. Fastball hit the center. Grissom right there. And one out in the sixth inning. Eisenreich is grabbing the third fly to right. Jimmy O for two. Eisenreich batting at 325 on deck is in Cavillo is homeward in the game. Say Chris, I want to send word to the people out there from Chinto out in Legends. I will be over there after I get off the air. It's a deep right field. Walker going back at the wall. It's gone. A home run for Eisenreich. His fifth of the year. Martinez has thrown three of them tonight. And all of a sudden, we're tied up again at five, and we can talk about Chento. Hey, and speaking of Chento, I mean, that's another 200 bucks that's headed into the to the coffers, headed towards the Philadelphia Child Guy in the center. So thanks to the people out there and legends tonight, Chento. 600 tonight, Chento has donated. And the wind is blowing at the bat, and the ball is really jumping. Well, Eisenreich, a good job of getting that fastball on the inside part of the plate and tying the game up for the Phillies. So listen, when you go out to Chento, as this ball goes into the Phillies bullpen, it's about time for you to lobby for another one of those baskets, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. Well, if you work on that. I will go out there, probably, probably have them out there for us, just a question yeah. of, okay. Grounded to third baseman Sean Berry. He throws the first. Incavillia is retired, two outs. Yeah, you'll just have them sent back then, right? Incavillia into the lineup. I mean, you would think Milt Thompson might be in there against Martinez, but I think Milt is what one or two for 20. Uh, one for 27 lifetime against Martinez. So Jim Fergosi doing his homework and making a substitution, putting Pete Incavillia in there, and it's paid dividends tonight. There is Milt. Phillies have had a great situation with the platoon they've had in left field this year, though, between those two. It's not a strict platoon. But they've combined for 23 homers now and 99 runs batted in between Thompson and Incavillia and combined to hit 329 with runners in scoring position. Well, I, you know, I think a big part of the, the platoon situation is it's, it's not a platoon when Incavillia is hot because he can do so much damage, put so many runs on the board for you. So when he's hot, they like to get him in the lineup. And that's the only time they'll vary away from that platoon situation. Phillies continue with the bullpen heating up. Larry Anderson is throwing. Ben Rivera is on deck. And the count is one and one on Stocker, who is 0 for 1 tonight. He has walked and scored a run. So it would appear if Kevin Stocker were to get on base here, as we look at Incavilia, that they would hit for Rivera the way Anderson continues to throw. There's ben waiting. Yeah, and Anderson's not a guy you get up. Right. If you're not serious, because being that old, that body once once he starts throwing, you better get him before he rusts up. <laughs> and you know, I really have a question about Anderson's age. A guy I played against an A-ball, A-ball, saying he's what 38, 40. He says he's 40. He admits to 40. Two and two to ooh. Stocker. It hit him. Gary gave an ooh and it hit him, and Ben Rivera is being called back. 
it's going to be a curveball that hits Stockton on his back leg. You know, he tries to get his, his front leg out of the way. He moves it, and then you see it just catch his back knee. And Ben Rivera goes back, and here comes Ricky Jordan out to hit for him. Well, you see, get that right leg out of there and just catches his left knee. Ricky Jordan, the pinch hitter. Ricky has not played much or been used much lately. Tough roll for him. Batting at 264. 12 for 40 as a pinch hitter. Two runs batted in. Lifetime against Dennis Martinez. Three for 10 with a homer. So Ben Rivera departs after six innings. Expos seven hits, five runs. All of them earned. Ben did not walk a batter tonight. And we have him with five strikeouts. They get six strikeouts. Ricky Jordan facing Martinez who starts him with a fastball over first strike. Larry Anderson will come on and pitch in the seventh inning. Rivera cannot lose this game. He can only win it should the Phillies go ahead in this inning. is Lenny Dykstra. Pirates have gone ahead by a couple in the seventh inning. RBI hits by Don Slard and Carlos Garcia. Singles came back from being down three to two to tie it up. Now they have to, have to come back again. Which they are more than capable of doing. Foul away right side. And the Phillies were down 2-0. Had to come back. They went down again 5-4 and they've come back again. So the good teams will will scrap. Philly's really using the long ball tonight now with 119 homers, three in the ball game, which leads the league. Kevin Stocker leads off first, a ball and two strikes to the pitch hitter Ricky Jordan. And pitch to Ricky. Fouls it off. Stay glued to first base because you know you don't want to race Ricky Jordan in there. Ricky Jordan, Kevin Stocker gets thrown out. That means that the pitcher would lead off the next inning. And you lose your pinch hitter. A ball and two strikes to Ricky. Two and two. Dennis Martinez right at 100 total pitches. First time we've really seen him drop down a little bit. He's known to drop down even more than that to right handers. But you don't get to see it because the Phillies, they throw so many left handers at you that it gets you out of your rhythm. You forget what pitches you have. Line drive, base hit, left field. Eisenreich for a stocker will have to stop at second. Good play by a Lou. Oh, he is a. Very, very fine outfitter. Got to that ball in a hurry. Stocker running with two outs. Still couldn't get the third. A little very heads up on that play. I, he was going to stop Ricky Jordan from getting the second if Stocker had the base. But he, that was a sidearm pitch right there that Ricky Jordan hit. But a little comes over and he looks right at second, third base. He's going to fire it in there when he sees Kevin Stocker hold up. But he was prepared to go to third or second to keep Ricky Jordan from getting there. Brian Barnes, the left-hander, continues to throw in the bullpen. Lenny Dykes through the batter off another good night. In his last two at-bats, he's collected seven total bases with a homer and a triple and scored two more runs. Two on and two outs. See, I'm watching the Lou out there in left field where he's playing in Lenny Dykes. A little bit too deep. And Dykstra is a classic case where if you're an outfielder, you have to move according to the count because if he's ahead in the count, he's going to pull it. See, the Phillies are 16 and 1 when Dykstra scores two runs, which he has scored tonight. And they have three very good arms in that outfield in Alou, Grissom, and Walker. All three of them are plus arms. The ball in the strike. 
strike on Lenny. Dykes is homer is 13th. The triple is second. He has 37 runs batted in. One ball and one strike to Dykstra. Martinez came with a high fastball there, stayed off it. About Ricky Jordan coming off the bench, getting the hit off this guy. I mean, he dropped down, nasty little sinker he threw out there. He reached out and nailed it in left field. Oh, he mentioned, you know, he had decent numbers off him. Now he's four for 11. Steps on the bag. Phillies retired here in the sixth inning. Gary's headed out to the Chento, folks. Phil's tied on a run on the home run by Eisenreich. Two hits, three hits, two hits, no errors. Two left. We're tied. Trust me, there are just some things you don't want to paint every year. That's why Sean Williams Top of the Line Super Paint has a 20-year warranty. And it's on sale now during the Super Sale Athon. Interior and exterior super paint is only $16.99. Super Salathon ends August 28th. So hurry. Like I said, there are some things you don't want to paint every year. Norman! Hmm. What? Oh, guard dog. Oh, very scary. that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. <laughs> Darren Dalton, Madonna, Lenny Dykstra, Gina Davis, John Crutt, Rosie O'Donnell, Jim Fragosi, Tom Hanks, the Phillies, and the Peaches. The hottest teams in baseball. Two teams in a league of their own, and only one channel's got them both. Prism. Whether it's at the vet or on the silver screen, it's the most exciting baseball action of the summer. From your baseball crazy friends at Prism, the only place to be for the summer of 93. It's a really good-looking baseball jacket, free for kids 14 and under. Compliments of Acme and Kraft when the Phillies play the Reds Sunday, August 29th at 135. They'll make a racket to get this jacket. Call 463-1000. Business person special number five. Don't forget tomorrow's number four. Number five's coming up on Wednesday, August the 25th at 12.35 when the Phillies play the Colorado Rockies. For your tickets, call 463-1000. You'll receive a terrific Friday of the Phillies poster that day featuring the Phillies pitching staff. Compliments of Mellon PSFS. And don't forget, it's the last chance to see Colorado at the vet this year. Call 463-1000 for your tickets. We'll see you down there. Larry Anderson, the new pitcher for the Phillies, and he has just done a terrific job this year. There are the numbers on Andy. Gee, Chris, I thought we were in August. It's not the 4th of July here, is it? <laughs> they are firing everywhere. out of here, aren't they? Oh, boy. Larry Anderson, lifetime against these Montreal Expos, is 6-1 with a 1.53 earned run average. In 42 games this year against the Expos, two and two third innings, no earned runs, and two games. You would have to attribute that, I guess, to the fact that over the years the Expos have been so right-handed. Yes, very much so. I had a chance to chat with the Cento people out in the Legends booth out in center field, and they said that they have put aside $50,000 this year for Phillies home runs. So <laughs> Phillies have a little ways to go to catch it. Well, they're working on it. Mm hmm. Gary Maddox is on his way out to visit those fine folks right now. Wilfredo Cordero, the shortstop, will lead it off. And John Vanderwall has moved out to bat for the pitcher Martinez. And Mel Rojas is starting to throw. There is Vanderwall. So Martinez will be finished for the evening. Pitch is over for a strike. There is Mel Rojas, the nephew of Felipe Alou. <laughs> Ball 
Cordero with a little looper off the end of the bat. Eisenreich, what a catch by Jim Eisenreich. I'm telling you, this guy has done such a great job for the Phillies this year. It's a game-tying home run, and then comes on and takes a sure base hit away from Cordero. One out here in the seventh inning. Big league play as we look at John Vukovic, who gives the sign to the infielders. As you can see, a diving catch and keeping his arm outstretched so that the glove, after he catches the ball, does not hit on the turf because a lot of times when players make those diving catches and their glove bounces on the turf, you can see him keep the glove up, the ball comes out. So Eisenreich making a great diving catch and remembering to keep the glove up so the ball doesn't bounce out there. Nice play, big league play by Eisenreich. John Vanderwall will come on and bat, batting at 239, four for 16 as a pinch hitter, with two runs batted in. As Anderson gives a little wave of his glove out to Eisenreich. Vanderwall with some power, with five homers. He jammed him with a cut fastball. Here comes Lenny. Make sure on the run, two out. The no batter now will be Sean Berry, his first at bat of the ball game after replacing Delano De Shields, who had to leave with a sprained thumb. Well, we talked about that before I left, but I will tell you a uh, something that uh, might cause a little bit of a problem in, in the latter part of this game. In talking to Ralph Fran Japan, the head groundskeeper, he said about 10:07 we're expected to get a little bit of a light rainfall, and then carrying on towards 11 o'clock into a heavy rainfall. So. I guess we just have to wait and see. Let's keep this baby moving. Barry with a big swing and a miss. We are tied right now at five here in the seventh inning. Dennis Martinez now out of the game as the pitch is fouled away. Six innings, seven hits, five earned runs, two walks and four strikeouts. And Mel Rojas will come on to pitch the seventh. Phillies are in a guarding the line defense. They have Hollins way over at third and Crock headed towards the line at first. Both starters go six innings tonight. At this point, neither involved in the decision. Ben Rivera cannot win it. And at this point, the Expos would have to score here in this inning and go ahead to give Martinez a chance. Two outs, nobody on base. Larry Anderson on in his first inning of work. Another one to right center. Lenny Dykes to right there. That'll do it. Anderson has a three up and three down inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We're headed for the seventh inning stretch. Jim Imagine a hot god shadow with all kinds of equipment for under 10-1. Now that's a pretty picture. So drop into the 93 model clearance going on now at your nearest Dodge dealer. This Dodge Spirit, America's lowest priced six passenger car, even comes with air at no extra charge. Because the lid's coming off great deals during the Dodge 93 model clearance. So see your nearest Dodge dealer today. Shop, my mama told me. Shopping center, nine out of ten people use. The genuine New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages. Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. A ballot lobby company. Why will some people only use Texaco System 3 gasolines? I'll tell you the first reason. My dad said System 3 cleaned out his intake things and his fuel inspector. Second reason. Our dads keep saying get good grades. So we come here. The reasons I come here. Every grade of Texaco System 3 performs in cars both new and old. They do? Well, no wonder we're getting the horsepower we should be getting. Count on System 3 for performance in your car. Reasons are... I mean, where do I start? Hi, I'm Dick Vermeil with a Blue Cross Blue Shield health tip. What is the recommended daily allowance for sodium? Adults should keep sodium intake between 1,100 to 3,300 milligrams daily, or about one to one and a half teaspoons of salt. Those on a salt-restricted diet may need even less. Check with your doctor. The 
starting pitcher for the Montreal Expos, the right-hander Mel Rojas, and they use him a lot. Coming into game number 46, there are the numbers on him. Good fastball, hard forkball, though the reports on him are he's not throwing as hard this year. As a result, his strikeouts are down. You see only 30 in 61 innings. He, he's normally close to a strikeout per inning guy. after this one. This one, Jay, really should go back to his room and watch tonight. <laughs> Final analysis with Richard Gere and Kim Basinger. That is, that's a winner right there, folks. So after the game tonight, be sure and stay tuned for Final Analysis right here on Prism. The channel with the better choice of movies in the summer of 93. Well, I just might do that. I'm, I'm a big movie buff, as you well know. That one is highly recommended. Mariano Duncan will lead it off, followed by John Cruck and Dave Hollins in a tie ball game. Duncan tonight is one for three, grounded a ball off the second baseman Lansing's glove into center, is credited with a hit and a run batted in. Totals are identical, well almost. The Phillies have an error, the Expos have none. Both teams with five runs on seven hits. And Rojas's first pitch. Here's a fastball over for a strike. Rojas fastball slider forkball. He came back on August 5th after missing seven games due to an aggravated hamstring. There's that forkball mm -hmm. straight down and hard was on the 15 day DL from July 4th through July 18th with a hamstring problem. Mel is 26 years of age from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Duncan grounds one to short. Cordero on a big hop throws him out, one away. The batter is Kruk, 0 for 3. There's Joe West, first base umpire, taking a little stroll down the first baseline. Coming into the game, the third leading hitter in the league at 343 has lost a few points in his average as he swings and misses at Rojas's pitch. John, one of the several Phillies out early today taking extra batting practice, another Pete in Pavilion. And Cruck fooled 0 and 2. Phillies with three homers in the game by Incavilia, Dykstra, and Eisenreich. The Expos have one homer, but it was a big one, a three-run homer by Alou. No balls, two strikes on Kruk. Just missed. He wanted it, didn't get it. Kruk lifetime against Rojas is four for nine, 444. With a run batted in, he's two for three off him this year. Second baseman Lansing to Randy Reddy. Two outs. Lansing, who began the game at third, now at second as the Shields is out with a sore thumb. And Dave Hollins, the batter, one for three. Rojas has retired the first two batters he's faced. Phillies with no activity in their bullpen. It would appear that Anderson will pitch the eighth inning in this 5 5 game. And Hollins takes strike one. Dalton, the on deck batter. There's Darren. You still see some of the after effects of that big collision that Dalton had on his right eye there. Fork ball misses 0 2. There it is. Mm -hmm. That happened back in May down in right. Florida. Long time. He was in a collision with Rich Renteria. Oh, well, I'm sure he's strong. Seventh inning as he strikes him out on the fourth ball. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We're headed to the bottom of the seventh, tied at five.
tonight's ladies' night, and there's a special on Bud Light. Oh, really? If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, <laughs> make it a Bud Light. Oh, no, it's Ted from accounting. It's often taken for granted, yet it's as precious as the very air we breathe. It's called freedom. And it's what inspired Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice, a health plan that offers people the low costs of an HMO without asking them to give up what they value most, their freedom. Personal choice, the health plan that controls costs, not people. Introducing a Honda Rarity. Well, it's more of an unusual occurrence. Actually, it's never happened like this before. Definitely out of the ordinary. As a matter of fact, we've never uttered these words before. And though it's our first, at these prices, they're not gonna last. about as even as you can get as we head to the eighth inning. You see it's been back and forth. Bills and the Expos tied at five. Big home run by Moises Alou to put them ahead at 5-4. Honey Dykstra, two-run homer. In Cavillia solo and Eisenreich's homer in the sixth inning. Tied this one at five. As we head on into the eighth inning and Randy Reddy will lead it off. Reddy playing at first base tonight. Has a couple of hits. There's a fanatic for Bortz on the first base dugout. <laughs> well, he gets away with murder in that suit. I'm oh, it sure you. does. I wonder how he spotted her. <laughs> Randy ready to batter. The man has fun, that fanatic. That's what it's all about. Uh-oh. Said they could come back. St. Louis Cardinals come back with a three-run double by Luis Alisea. They're playing well in that series at Pittsburgh. Alisea hit a grand slam a few games ago for him. The Cardinals, by the way, will move on to, to uh, Montreal this weekend and play the Expos, a three-game series, while the Phillies are entertaining the New York Mets. The Cardinals then go home next week to play San Diego and Los Angeles. Pitch to Reddy, misses two and one. Randy has a base hit. He was thrown out on a fine play by Hollins and then had a swing and bunt hit the third, and he scored a run. With West starting to loosen for the Phillies. Slider out over the plate. Dykes for coming on. Lenny there makes the play. Well, Larry Anderson has come in and had faced four hitters and thrown four fly balls. It's amazing to see him pitch too because most of the time you know you're going to get a breaking ball, usually a slider, and yet he's able to get those hitters to swing at pitches just a little bit out of the strike zone. Keith Grissom, 0 for 2 tonight, sacrifice fly and a run batted in his 65th of the year. Beats a breaking ball foul to Larry Walker in the on deck circle, flips it to the crowd. There's Dave Hollins over in the line at third, Cruck doing the same at first. Five thousand two hundred and sixty tickets sold here for the ball game tonight. Who won the pool? Swing and a miss. You did. 
<laughs> I picked 42,000. Oh, Jeff won the pool. He beat me by about 400. Oh, Jeff. Jeff Nichiwa. keeping our scores in the back. One and two to Grissom. Missed outside. Two and two. Well, I went on what I saw in the ballpark here tonight. He forgot. I forgot about those tickets sold this year. Wow. That was it. Huh? Good excuse, huh? Strike him out. Great slider right there. Grissom pulled off that one. We'll show it to you one more time. Watch the location, the break on the ball, right on the outside corner, ball breaking down perfectly. Great pitch by Anderson. And here comes Larry Walker. Walker tonight has struck out twice, singled and scored a run. All his at bats coming off the starter, Ben Rivera facing Anderson for the first time. Anderson will want to stay away from Walker's power and does with a fastball in the outside corner for strike one call. Ground ball to Duncan. And Mariano, an easy play, and Larry Anderson retires six in a row. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base to the bottom of the eighth. We're still tied at five. sunshine this afternoon high close to yesterday's 96 downtown Now at your nearest Dodge dealer. Now save up to $13.57 on Dodge Caravans, including air conditioning at no extra charge. So cut yourself in for great savings at the 93 model clearance now at your nearest Dodge dealer. An ad for a roommate brought a stranger into Allison's life. Someone. And the beer on you. Who shares. It's kind of fun having a girlfriend again. Someone. Do you guys know when you'll be back? Who cares? Where the hell have you been? Someone who would kill to be her. Single white female. The Montreal Expos are here one more time. That's tomorrow afternoon. Final time the Expos will be in town this year for the business person special. And then the Mets come in on Friday night at 7.35, Saturday at 7.05, and Sunday afternoon at 1.35 on Road Jersey Day, 463-1000. First stop by one of the many local Ticketmaster outlets. Philly's bench trying to get something going. Tie ball game here in the eighth. Dalton Eisenreich in Cavillia. Face a tough right-hander, Mel Rojas. They're in 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. He's popped up foul and fly out to center. 21 homers and 87 runs batted in. Well, he's trying to win tonight. There would be 30 games over 500 for the second time this year. They are 71 and 42 coming into this one. And with 71 wins, they have surpassed their victory total for all of last year. <laughs> Isn't that something? Rojas, as we mentioned, with a good fastball, good split finger pitch. In this situation, bottom of the eighth inning game tied. He's not going to give Dalton much to hit on the inside part of the plate. Exactly staying away. Two and one. This is where you got to hope as a hitter that a pitcher trying to throw that pitch on the outside part of the plate makes a mistake. And catches some of the middle of the plate. We got a chance to drive it a little. That might have been that fork ball. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Heck of a pitch, two and one. Because yeah, he throws it with the same motion as his fastball. And the batter stands at the plate, sees the arm motion, expects it to be a fastball and straight. And as you see right there, the bottom almost drops right out of it. Two and two to Dalton. 
fastball grounded to first. Randy Reddy on a big hop will run to the back. He got caught in between a little bit then. He's inexperienced at first. He wasn't sure whether to take him himself or wait for Rojas, and he just got there in time. And he almost tripped over the bag. Watch this. I got, oh, no, I don't must, but he got watch this. He just got his toe on. Hey, Reddy used to be great here playing left field doing the Spider-Man act when he would plaster himself up on the wall in left center. And the ball would be about 10 feet away from him. <laughs> his teammates used to replay those over and over downstairs. Here's Eisenreich who homered his last time up ball one low one for three is Jim West continues to warm up in the Phillies bullpen as does Mitch Williams West will come in if the game remains tied and Williams of course would come in if the Phillies can bleed out a run here in the eighth. Second home run of the game. Only had a two run homer earlier. So those two teams are battling each other tonight at Three Rivers. We're into August. We'll have to do a little scoreboard watching, I guess. Then. Well, it's fun to watch when you're ahead. So we have tie games here and in the western part of the state. 5 5 here, 6 6 in Pittsburgh. Both games in the eighth inning. And there are the standings. Eisenreich with another base hit. He just continues to get his hits. And the Phillies have a one out base runner in the eighth for big beating Cavillia. Eisenreich with a very short quick swing. Good batting stroke for line drive hitter but watch the pitch. Rojas tried to get the fork ball away from him, got it up in the strike zone, and Eisenreich just went right with it, right back up the middle. And Cavillo for one of Rojas this year. He also has been hit by a pitch by him. That home run, 418 feet, just to the left of dead center. Coming off Dennis Martinez in the third inning. Montreal plays. In Cavillia as a pull hitter and is a Lou ever deep in left. Grissom fairly shallow in center. Look at a Lou. Now watch where Grissom is. <laughs> and then Larry Walker. They're playing the line at third. They just moved Barry over a step. And in Cavillia beats it foul off the plate. You know, the plate is in fair territory. What happens on that situation is the catcher, Fletcher, waited in foul territory to catch the ball. If he gets himself in fair territory, that ball will be called fair. There's, uh, there's Moises Alou. He's, he's going to need to call a cab to get in from there after this inning. Said he was deep. Cavillia checks on the ball inside. One and one. Pete now with 20 homers and 69 runs batted in. Now Martin a two run home run. That game is in the eighth inning, right? Wow. And it's just gone to the top of the ninth, so the Pirates have come up with three in the bottom of the eighth inning to take the two run lead into the ninth. After Ali Sayed hit a three run double to put them ahead. That home run off Todd Burns did Al Martin. Eisenreich doesn't run much, but when he does, he makes it. Look at that wrap he has on the leg. That obviously is the hamstring problem that Rojas has been having this year. So he has a heavy wrap around that right thigh area, right hamstring, which is starting to bother him a little bit. Thought that was inside. Frost does not throw a lot of breaking balls. He does have a slider which he'll use, but he throws mostly fastball, fork ball. He's a lot like Brian Harvey, who the Phillies saw over the weekend in Florida. And he doesn't throw anything slow.
fourth ball, beaten to third. Barry will go for the lead man, Eisenreich, and just got him. Out at second is Eisenreich. He Cavillia safe at first on the fielder's choice. Two down for Stocker. Eisenreich made sure that Lansing did not try to complete the double play. He slid very hard into the inside of the bag to make sure Lansing really had no throw whatsoever. Well, I'll tell you what, he was close to catching that ball on the other side of second, wasn't he? Yep. They don't call that too often. Umpire will usually call it when the fielder catches the ball, both feet are down on the other side of the bag, then they'll nail him with it. Stocker is 0 for 1 tonight. He's walked, scored a run, and been hit by a pitch. And Milt Thompson's out to bat for Anderson. Hard ground ball to short. Cordero will flip the second, and the Phillies are gone in the eighth inning. No runs, one hit. No errors and one man left. We're heading to the ninth, tied up at five. Did you know Texaco puts System 3 in every grade of gasoline? System 3 gets high marks in every grade, which is a lot better than I ever did. My dad says Texaco puts System 3 in every grade. I'm in the fourth grade. Of course. That's why I always fill up with System 3. <laughs> what do I look like? Don't say it. Visit your Texaco station. I can get the tires rotated, the car lubed, and still get home in time for the game. Mow the lawn. For unbeatable System 3 gasolines and so much more. Mow the lawn. Mow the lawn. It's like having a Billy's ticket window come right to your home. Call 463-1000 and reserve your tickets in advance. No rushing, no waiting, no hassle. 463-1000. It's like having a Phillies ticket window right in your home. Yeah, how far away do you think I can get? In 72 hours. I wouldn't trust my car past the city limits. For the way you travel today more than ever, the smart money is on budget. Plan a great getaway by giving budget a call. You'll get great rates on great cars. The smart money is on budget. Major League Baseball scoreboard John Burkett's an 18-game winner, shutting out the Reds today, 6 to nothing. Florida and Chicago involved in a slugfest. Atlanta beating the New York Mets by a score of 4 to 2. Jeff Blauser, a home run. And we just told you that Pittsburgh has gone ahead of St. Louis. Houston, San Diego just getting underway. Colorado, L.A. later on. In the American League, Oakland beats Chicago. Tom Van Poppel wins his third. Eckersley a save. Detroit big over Baltimore. A grand slammer for Dan Gladden, his second in two games. Toronto leading Minnesota late. New York over Boston in that big series in the seventh inning. Milwaukee over Cleveland. California leading Texas. They are in the fourth. And Kansas City over Seattle. That game in the sixth inning. Double switch for the Phillies. Milt Thompson will come in, play left field and bat ninth. And the new pitcher for the Phillies batting in Pete Incavillia's spot in the seven hole is the left-hander David West. Game number 53 for West. Against the Montreal Expos this year, he's 0-1 with a 1-5-0 earned run average in four games. Six innings pitched for the big tall left-hander. Facing Moises Alou, who hit a three-run home run his last time up off the starter Ben Rivera. It'll be Alou, Fletcher, Lansing scheduled to hit. Jammer, foul out of play right side. Now this guy is really starting to become a big league hitter, isn't he? Good player. Good outfielder, too. Every time we see him, he just gets better and better. He uses that big R-161. That's a Louisville model bat with a big, big head on it. You can see how high the pine tar is up on it. Foul away again. I'm sure if you measured that inches on how high the pine tar is up on that, it would exceed the limit of 18. But after the George Brett incident of many years ago, 10 to be exact, you don't see that call very often. That is a long bat, too. Wes tried to backdoor breaking ball him, and it missed one and two and two. West leads the Phils with 53 appearances and has a good strikeout ratio, 67 and 65. Did he go? No. Fielder first to Joe West. 
said no, I guess. <laughs> I don't think he moved, did he? Oh, he just shook his head. And they want a new baseball. And we just see a final posted as the Pirates have beaten the St. Louis Cardinals by a score of eight to six. So the Phillies have a chance to pick up a full game on St. Louis tonight if they can win. There we go. Six and a half at this point. Phillies are in a tie game here in the ninth inning with Montreal. That ball hit his back. And he's out. That ball, Kerwin Danley saying the ball hit his bat. It's a foul tip and it's a strikeout. And he's saying it hit his arm. And now he drops his helmet, does a little, and his father comes out. And he throws him out of the game, does Kerwin Danley. Threw him right out of the game and now Felipe Alou is really hot. Boy, that all happened fast. Why would he toss Alou out after he had walked by him 15 feet? It was heading to the dugout and not saying anything. Well, he must have been saying something. <laughs> now the manager might go next. Kerwin Daly says the ball was a foul tip, held on to by Dalton for a strikeout. Alou, the batter, was very upset about it, fired his helmet, and then as he was going away, Kerwin Daly threw him out of the ball game. We've seen Danley say that's enough now. That's enough. Well, our great camera crew will show it to you one more time. What do you think, folks? Pitch coming inside. Well, it didn't hit the bat, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it got his arm. That's exactly what happened. Anywhere near the bat. Now Frank Pulley is getting uh, getting them away from the camera down there. It got his arm. Yeah, it definitely got his arm. Frank Pulley just came in from second base to tell him to don't go near the camera to look for a replay in the third base dugout. And Alou's pointing to where it hit him. Fires the helmet. Now he can't be saying a whole lot because he's walking away. <laughs> Maybe it was one of those cases where somebody else said something. That happened oh, the other night in Florida to the Phillies. That sure. Flatchman got thrown out for a fan saying something. <laughs> now, Lou Frazier had moved out to hit for um, Fletcher when they thought that Alou was going to be on at first base, but they just took him back. And Fletcher will bat against David West. And they're going to need a new left fielder if this game goes to the, well, it will go, obviously, to the bottom of the ninth. They're going to need a, another outfielder. Wow, that was a strange quirk, wasn't it? Really? You saw by the replay, the ball was nowhere near the bat. There's Lou Frazier. Make films in the spare time, right? <laughs> he does look a little by, like Spike Lane. Right? Stuck him out of a good breaking ball. He gave it a strikeout numbers on West, and he piles up two here in the ninth, two up and two down, and Lansing the batter. Well, when West has a good breaking ball, he is very tough. You can see the arc of the ball has got a big break. And against the left-hand batter, he's really murdered. The only guy I can remember in a lot of years that's tougher on a left-hand batter was John Candelari with that big sweeping slurve type pitch. Lansing the batter. And you know, when you look at West's numbers, right-handers are just batting 205 against him. So he's having a heck of a year for the Phillies. Guy that Lee Thomas got in the offseason from Minnesota for Mike Hartley. Got criticized a lot for it too, didn't he? <laughs> Fouled off. I just, uh, I, there's Ray Shore, the scout that goes around and checks all these deals out for Lee Thomas. You see Lee sitting there. Just kind of hope all those people that criticize Thomas and Giles for making the Incavilia deal and the Eisenreich deal and the West deal and the Danny Jackson deal. They all stand up at the end of the year and say, you know, we were wrong. Think that'll happen? <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that out, you know? Yeah, you're good at throwing that out. Yeah, you know, all these people have said, oh, why'd they get that guy? Why'd they get, oh, he's not any good. Yeah, I just, well, you know, just maybe they'll stand up and say, gee, maybe we were wrong. You like to bring that wrath down on you, don't you? Oh, gosh. You know, what can I say? One ball, two strikes to Lansing, and now Dalton wants to go out and talk to West. That's unusual with two outs and nobody on base, but they don't want to make a mistake here for a potential long ball to Lansing, who has three homers. 
here's the roll aids relief break because roll aid spells relief Jeff Montgomery pretty far out in front of the American League and Lee Arthur Smith and Rod Beck and Brian Harvey in a dog fight right now in the National League. Philippe Alou might be reaching for some of those roll aids. That's going to be a tough play. Stocker bare hands won't get it. Clancy runs very well and Stocker did all he could do and he beats out the infield hit. The Expos have a base runner who is a base stealer. You can see this high top for a ball hit right off the dirt. Stocker playing about two steps deeper to try and cut off anything in the hole. Did everything in his power. He barehanded the ball and threw on the run. But as Chris said, Lansing has pretty good speed. There was nothing really Stocker could do. That's just one of those infield leaders. It's going to look like a line drive in the scorebook tomorrow. Cordero, the batter, 0 for 3. Lansing has stolen 14 bases and 17 attempts. There you see 82%. Hits are even at eight. He does not go, and the pitch is a strike. Now Frazier moves into the on-deck circle. To bat for Rojas. Kind of an interesting situation for Philippe Alou, manager of the Expos. Usually you like to steal with a left-hand hitter at the plate, but when you got two outs, you like to also have a runner in scoring position. There he goes. He got a great jump, and it's a base hit in the hole to right field. Lansing heads for third, and the Expos have runners at the corners all of a sudden with two outs, just like that. And Frazier will come up and bat for Rojas. West tried to throw something off speed. As Lansing took off, you can see that Cordero double cocked a little bit. All he had to do is hit the ball on the ground because Duncan had moved towards second to cover the steal, also. It's kind of interesting here. Here comes Frazier. As Wetland, the closer, gets up, hard throwing right hander. Lou Frazier batting at 311, 317 right handed, 308 left handed. He will bat from the right side as a pinch hitter. He is 10 for 36, 3 for 10 as a pinch hitter, right handed. This guy has very good speed. So if he chops anything in the infield, that's going to be trouble. Lou Frazier. West pitch is high ball one on deck is Sean Berry he's batting in the leadoff spot formerly occupied by the Shields who had to leave the game with an injury. There are the right base runners Lansing at third base and Cordero at first two outs. Strike call to Frazier. And one of the things that the hitting coach of the Expos has taught Frazier, Tommy Harper, by the way, is a hitting coach, former Major League player, good hitter, is to choke up on the battle a bit and utilize your speed, hit the ball on the ground. So you see Frazier right there choking up on the bat. There goes the base runner, and they just let him go. And Cordero moves into second. And the pitch was ball two. And we'll see how they score it. I don't think they'll give them a stolen base. They're still deciding over there in the press box. They did give him a stolen base. Number 11 for Cordero. Two and one on Frazier. Runners at second and third. Two outs here in a tie game in the ninth inning. Pitch from West. Oh, my goodness. What a play by Dalton. That was almost to the backstop. Three and one. Roger Mason is heating up in the bullpen with a right handed batter on deck. You can see how Darren Dalton had to really go up and flag that one down. Dalton had the glove at knee high. Here we go. Three and one. Low, he walked him. So the bases are loaded with two outs. Two outs, nobody on base, and all of a sudden they're loaded. Let's see if Fergosi brings in. Oh, here comes Johnny Padres. I don't know if Mason's ready yet. Padres is coming out to talk to West, and this could be a stall for eventually bringing Roger Mason in to pitch to Sean Berry. Now on the bench, they have one player left, the catcher. 
There is Roger Mason. There you see Todd Pratt and Mason warming up. And, and Joe Sedal is a guy I'm talking about that they have left. Now, whether or not they would use him or not, he's a left handed batter. If, in fact, the Phillies make the move, there he is. Sean Berry. This is the spot where DeShields would be batting. And let's see if they're going to stay with West. It appears that they will. Berry has had one at bat, and he's flied out, as you see. The Shields had gotten a couple hits and scored two runs before he had to leave with a sore thumb. Here's your ball game. Strike call. Five five. We're in the ninth. John Wetland heating up in the bullpen. One pitch on the way. Way outside with a breaking ball. <laughs> you lip readers, you could tell that Fergosi was not happy then. Not at all. You almost have to say to yourself, I gotta go right <laughs> after this guy. <laughs> well, you got bases loaded on right at him. <laughs> Here's I, the I one know one. what you're laughing. Well, that react that reaction to his that when his eyes oh. never popped out of his head. Now he threw a blazing fastball, one and two. Oh. Fergosi thought it was a wild pitch too when it left his hand. One ball, two strikes, two out. They are loaded. Here's the pitch. Struck him out. That was a Mitch Williams inning. Three strikeouts and they leave him loaded. No runs, two hits, no errors, and three left to the bottom of the ninth, tied at five. In a game rich with traditions, Sherwin Williams has created one of its own by preserving and protecting the national shrines of our national pastime. This is the paint of the pros. And it's the choice of millions of fans at home. And while your town may not have a big league ballpark in it, it does have a big league paint store. The pros know. Ask Sherwin-Williams. Reports of a legendary two-footed object have been growing. Anything? Nothing. Must be big. You haven't yet seen it. We're getting something. Coming over the hill, Sarge. Hit the lights, boys! Bigfoot! Bigfoot Pizza, the legendary value from Pizza Hut. With two square feet and a tasty new crust you can't get anywhere else. Or for $10.99. Okay, folks, let's break it up. Ah! Bigfoot Pizza, the biggest pizza you can get delivered. Nothing is sacred. No one is safe. Heroes will fall. Legends will crumble. The truth will be told, at least until the season starts. It's the Great Sports Debate's fantastic football preview. One hour of pigskin madness from Angelo, Glenn, Jason, and Al, designed to tell you everything you need to know, more or less, about the Eagles and the rest of the NFL. The Great Sports Debate fantastic football preview. It may not be the last word on football, but it's certainly the loudest. It's the fourth business person special of the season. Compliments of Mellon PSFS. Thursday, August 12th at 1235 when the Phillies play the Young Explosive Expos. Put some exciting baseball on your calendar. Call 463-1000. And the new left fielder with Moises Salou thrown out of the game is left fielder Lou Frazier. He came in as a pinch hitter. He remained in the game that night. And the hard-throwing John Wetland enters the ball game. Game number 48 for Wetland. Look at those strikeouts. 73 strikeouts in 59 of the third innings. He'll face Bill Thompson, Lenny Dykstra, Mariano Duncan in a 5 5 ball game. He's a power pitcher all the way. Everything hard. Fastball, curveball, slide. Well, this guy can be really nasty on a given night. You know, ironically, the Dodgers wanted to make him a starting pitcher. 
He did not feature well in that role. He was bounced around a little bit from Albuquerque to the big leagues, ending up getting a break, coming here, becoming a closer for the Expos. He misses low to Thompson. Two balls and no strikes. Thompson takes all the way and it's over for a strike. He thought it might have been a little high. Looking back to that ninth inning, it appeared the Phillies caught a break on that ball that was called a strikeout oh. on Alou. And Alou winds up out of the game, so they really catch a break. Strike two call, two and two. Expos bullpen in their last 15 games, five and three with six saves. Mostly behind Mel Rojas and John Wetland, their two power pitchers. Two and two to Thompson. Fouled away left side now to play. Wetland is 25 for 31 in save opportunities. How many games did he miss at the start of the season? Well, he broke his toe in spring training when he kicked that screen. Yeah. He was gone for a while, right? 2-2 to Milt. Tried to check, did he? Yes, and it's a full count. They have Randy Reddy over on the line at first, which is kind of surprising as hard as Wetland throws. There is Reddy. You don't expect him to pull this guy. And Barry over at third, which is more likely. Fouled away again. Some teams just move him over on the lines. It doesn't matter who the pitcher is. If he wants to do something and get the base runner moving, otherwise just let him hit. Let Thompson try and steal a base. We'll see what happens. Way up at third is Barry, the third baseman. He keeps moving over there well, and you know, two reasons. He wants to get Thompson back, but he wants to see if Dykes will commit early. And Dykes are showing no signs of a bunt. Doesn't mean he won't. He bunts it. He's got to bunt it down the first base side anyway. It's unlikely he's going to bunt. And he does it. And he pops it up foul out of play. Lenny a little mad with himself. Got that pitch he wanted. Wellen got a fastball towards the middle of the plate. And now Larry Boa goes back to the side. And see where this pitch is? It was a little bit above the belt, but it was right down the center of the plate. Dykstra knew it. He had a pitch. And he fouled it off. He really had a pitch to drive, too. reason you don't bunt besides the fact that Dykstra is your best offensive player is that the guy on deck Mariano Duncan is a right handed batter and what of his murder against right handed hitters. That's what I would say. There's the 0 1 pitch to Dykstra. Almost hitting. Lenny Dykstra off John Wetland in a Phillies uniform is 0 for 3. John Wetland comes from a musical family, a musician himself. Isn't his father some type of pianist somewhere in the San Francisco area? Yeah, he, he, okay, yeah that's right. His father, his, his parents are musicians. One ball, one strike. Forty 
35,000 plus tickets sold. Phillies with another big house here tonight. Should have another one tomorrow for that business person special. Pagosi and John Vukovic chewing away. Here's the 2 1 pitch to Lenny. Pop up foul. Third base side. This will go out of play behind the dugout. Wetland trying to keep the ball away from Dykstra. That pitch was up and away. Dykstra likes the ball out over the plate, but he likes it down. Wetland with a fastball at 90 to 92 miles an hour. Sometimes it has a little movement when it gets up in the strike zone. A lot of times you see players, when they see a fastball like that, they'll foul it off towards the third base side if you're a left-hand hitter. See the numbers on Thompson. Should he attempt to run? Two balls and two strikes to Lenny. Another foul out of play. Nothing cute wow. about this guy either. He comes right after you. Both him and Rojas are similar in that the difference being that Rojas throws the fork ball and Wetland has a good hard curveball. I wouldn't be surprised to see Wetland come back inside now to Dykes. He's got a couple pitches on the outside part of the plate. Two and two to Lenny Dykes. Did he ever get out in front of that? And where is this going to land? Oh, my goodness. Well, usually when it counts two and two, a batter has to hold a little bit up on a swing to protect the plate. You don't want to strike out in a huh. situation like this. So this is where your power pitcher wants to come back inside, try and jam you. And Dykstra, way out in front of this one, wanted to get him out of there, make sure he didn't get jammed. The ball's in the 600 level, <laughs> the orange seats. Now go back away from it. Oh, he almost picked off Randy Reddy. Yeah. Reddy's done a good job down there tonight. Yes, he has. That pitch that Dykstra hit way foul. If he hadn't hit it in that particular spot, he would have never got the batter on. He'd have jammed it. Thank goodness for the people behind the dugout. He didn't hit it lower. Yes, as hard as he hit that thing. Two and two to Lenny. There goes Thompson. It's a ball. Fletcher's throw is late. It goes into center field. Thompson gets up. He's going to get the third. And the Phillies are in business with a runner at third and nobody out in a 3-2 count on Dykstra. And now they'll probably walk him. Well, Pagosi did a good job on this one. With the count, two and two, he felt that Wetland almost had to throw a strike. But Thompson's slide was right on the inside part of the bag. You can see Pagosi tell him, come on, get up, get up. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't want to bunt in this situation, no. and uh, as it turns out, it's going to work out for him, maybe, if he wins the ball game. but he's certainly gotten into a great position. Now they're going to walk Dykstra, intentionally, of course, and they may even walk Duncan. We'll see. They walk Dykstra. Let's see what happens here. Intentional walk to Lenny. Here comes Duncan. They'll bring everybody all the way in, the outfielders and the infielders, no matter what. Is kind of in trouble right now, and he knows it. Well, you'd like to get a force out at any base, so. Stolen base, E2. Stolen base, and error on Fletcher. And they will pitch to Duncan. Here's Mel Thompson, 200th career stolen base, and it was a biggie. Everybody in now as they go after Duncan. The pitch to Mariano. There goes Dykstra. It's off the glove of the shortstop, Cordero. Scoring is Thompson. The Phillies win it six to five in the ninth inning. Phillies win another game late as Milt Thompson scores the winning run on a ball off the glove of Cordero. We'll get the scoring on it, but it doesn't matter. The Phillies win six five. And it is scored a base hit and an RBI, Jay. Well, they had the infield in, and the ball was a tough play to handle, but there's the plight of the Expos right there in front of you. Their shortstop position has kind of let them down all year. 27 errors by Cordero, 20 by Lansing. And right there, if you have a good regular shortstop, he usually backhands that ball or at least knocks it down. Watch Cordero on this ground ball. 
because Thompson could not have scored, but he didn't get over to knock it down. He just tucked his glove out and went off the end. You've got to knock that ball down, even if you have to dive on it, because Thompson won't score. And he wasn't running. He was. He had to make nope. sure that went through with nobody out. He wasn't going to run on the play. So the Phillies come from behind a couple of times tonight and finally win the game in the ninth. Lee, you've got to knock that ball down. You've got to get in front of it. He tried to backhand it. And the Phillies pick up another win. And now 30 games over 500. And a seven-game lead, and we'll be back with more right after this. During the 93 Pontiac closeout, you can get a new Grand Am for just $12,974 with $1,000 cash back. Or get 3.9% financing for up to 48 months. No wonder they're going so fast. The 93 Pontiac Grand Am Closeout. Don't miss it. It was for immigrants and their children and their dreams. It was for families. For new beginnings. And today, there's still just one reason why we always do our best. It's for you. Mellon PSFS. When you work one job, grab a quick lunch, a quicker dinner, and move on to job number two. How are you going to spell relief? That's a big relief you can feel because Rolaids absorbs 47 times its weight in excess stomach acid to stop heartburn fast. So for millions, there's only one way to spell 100% relief. Rolaids spells 100% relief. Columbia Pictures would like to take you out to the ball game for an all-star comedy. They'll pay you $75 a week. We only make 30 at the dairy. Well, then, this would be more, wouldn't it? See how it works is, the train moves, not the station. <laughs> There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. My uniform bursts open, and oops, my bosoms come flying out. You think there were men in this country who ain't seen your bosoms? A league of their own. Well, here's the summer in a very exciting game. Montreal jumped out two to nothing. Phil's ahead. Phil's ahead. Montreal ahead. Phillies tie it, and then they finally win it in the ninth inning on that ball off the glove of Will Cordero at shortstop. Phillies win by a score of six to five. The relievers, the last two guys in the ball game, get the decisions. David West four and three. John Wetland seven and three. Moises Alou a three-run home run. He was also ejected from the ball game. Buddy Dykeson, Dykeson, a two-run homer. Pete Cavillo a solo bomb to center. Jim Eisenreich tied the game with his home run in the sixth inning. And here is the home run by Jim Eisenreich, the Phillies' third of the ball game, off Dennis Martinez that tied the game at that point at five. And Eisenreich doing his normal good job in the ball game. The first batter Barry Anderson faces in the seventh inning is Will Cordero, a little looper to right. Here he comes, and another fine play by Jim Eisenreich, and that's why we have decided to name him our Texaco star of the game. Phillies win at 6-5 with a run in the bottom of the ninth. Jay and I'll be back with more right after this. Phillies baseball has been brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Buy your local Sherwin-Williams paint stores. The pros know ask Sherwin-Williams, a participating sponsor of Major League Baseball. By Mellon PSFS, the official bank of the Phillies. By Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. No other book can match it, a Bell Atlantic Company. By Texaco. Save up to $5 by joining Texaco's frequent fueler club. Visit your local participating Texaco location for all the details. Texaco, star of the American road. By Coca-Cola. Phillies baseball and Coca-Cola, always a hit, always Coca-Cola. By Cento, fine Italian food. The company that says, trust your family with our family. By your local Quality Plus Ford dealer, now is the time to save big on the best-selling cars and trucks in America during your Ford dealer's model year-end clearance. By the Pennsylvania Lottery, a participating advertiser in Phillies baseball, lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvania. 
and by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield Personal Choice, the health plan that controls costs, not people. It's baseball under the sun when the Phillies try to bury the pesky Montreal Expos live from the vet Thursday afternoon at 12.30 right here on Prism, the home game home of the Phillies. Columbia Pictures would like to take you out to the ball game for an all-star comedy. They'll pay you $75 a week. We only make 30 at the dairy. Well then, this would be more, wouldn't it? See how it works is, the train moves, not the station. <laughs> There's no crying! There's no crying in baseball! My uniform bursts open and, oops, my bosoms come flying out. You think there are men in this country who ain't seen your bosoms? A league of their own. A fabulous Jules Jurgensen watch. Jules Jurgensen, creator of fine timepieces since 1740 and winner of 32 international awards. Jules Jurgensen, the ultimate fine watch. Richard Schickel of Time Magazine says The Fugitive is a first-rate thriller. It's fast and furious, raves David Anson of Newsweek. Starts at a gallop and never stops to catch its breath. Harrison Ford is The Fugitive, rated PG-13. Now playing at a theater near you. And back here at Veterans Stadium, Chris Wheeler with Jay Johnson. There's your finals. The Phillies score a run in the bottom of the ninth inning. They had to come from behind twice in this ball game and then win the game in the bottom of the ninth off John Wetland. And a lot of guys played key roles in this ball game, Jay. And when you get right down to it, I guess that's the story of the 93 Phillies. That, that's, that's it, Chris. Everybody contributed tonight. Some key hits, great defensive plays, a good at bat by Stocker, Dykstra doing his thing, Incavilla coming in, having some good numbers lately, getting the home run. And, of course, Eisenreich doing a great job of filling as he's done all year long. So you look at those guys, and then you go to the pitching side with uh, West doing the job. Uh, you know, as you said, that's, that's the 93 Phillies. Everybody does a job when it's needed. Well, it's a good ball game here tonight. We'll be back at you in oh, about 13 hours. Larry Rosen will have the pregame show beginning at 12 o'clock. And then we'll have business person special number four coming up at 1230 as the Phillies get out the broom and try and sweep the Montreal Expos. They now lead the National League by seven full games over the second place St. Louis Cardinals. Thanks a lot for watching tonight. For my colleagues Jay Johnstone and Gary Maddox, this is Chris Willer. We invite you to stay tuned now for a terrific movie coming up. Final analysis. The final again here at the Vet. The Phillies six and the Expos five. Good night.